Welcome to Pulaski Field for, uh, well, it, you know, in a technology age that we live in, there, there are some setbacks, but you know what? We're here. It's August 20th, Friday night. We're here live at Pulaski County Field. Pulaski County's just taking the lead on the number one team in 3A high school football in Kentucky. And you know what? I'm excited, and not just because of that. I'm excited because my man, James Murray. James, how are you? Out of breath, running back down from the student section up to here. Just so you all understand, Mr. Murray has ran what's equivalent to a 5K just in the last, I don't know, 30 seconds, which is impressive. You can do that in 30 seconds. I'm, I'm impressed with you, James, and the staff of guys trying to get us live on air. Okay, I'm going to, uh, to update what's happened so far in the ball game. Maroons had the ball first, went four and out. Fourth and one, short at midfield. Belfry run two plays, touchdown Dixon. After that, we drove the length of the field, touchdown Barrick Williams. Held Belfry, touchdown Antonio Palmer over the middle for 25 plus yards. Now Belfry has the ball, we're up 14 to seven, two minutes and 19 seconds left in the first quarter. And really the story so far, our offensive line, PC's offensive line and PC's defense, who's just zoned in on Dixon, who's 25 years old, Mr. Kentucky football, who's back again for another senior year. And really the dude is impressive. But here we are with the lead. I'm excited. Football is in the air. It's, it's go time. We got teacher tailgate. There's students everywhere. Belfry fans that traveled 25 hours uh, to get here. I'm, I, I can't emphasize enough just how awesome this is. This is great to be here. So is Dixon number 25 and he's 25 years old is what you're telling he's me? He's 25 and that is exactly his same age. Now facts are going to be off. Is that Fumble Belfry? Fumble Pulaski Fumble. is trying to root like they've got the ball and it is first oh, and wow. 10. Pulaski Maroons at their own 43 yard line. Man, all that work is paying off and really the story has been Polston having so much time to make his decisions and he's so poised when he's delivering his throws. He's looking good early, James. You know what, he is looking good. And I'm telling you what, when Antonio Palmer caught that, caught that little crossing route, that guy has got some wheels, baby. He turned on the Jets, and there was no Belfry player going to run him down. I don't care if Dixon was out there chasing him. <laughs> oh yeah, he hit another gear, and that was impressive. I'm, I'm so excited for him, because he is, what a story with Antonio. Hey, look there, number 15, he's pointing up there to us. He might, he might be ready for another play here, Foster. He, he directly pointed to you and I up here in the oh, booth. Oh, let's see it. Oh, looks like it's running up the middle, but it's a good play. Looks like we've got approximately eight yards on the carry. Cowbells are in effect at the Pulaski County student section, and I'm not sure I like it. But anyway, I, that's that's pretty neat. I'm all for fans. You're enjoying. just having a flashback of Mississippi State, okay? I know you're a Wildcat, Wildcat fan, but you're having a flashback, dude. Take it away. That's, Take it away. That's, that's exactly right. I think that's what it is. I got to stop being so jaded. Is Abbott on that last carry for five yards? Well, now we got a little swing pass out here to number 16. Looks like he's going to be tackled for a loss, and he might have got a yard. That looks like this Chandler Godby. Chandler Godby. Nice play. Considering there's nothing on it. Okay, we just got a penalty flag on the near sideline. That might have been a late hit. Coaching staff. Oh no! Don't tell me that's on the plastic coaching staff. I don't want to believe that. Could be a sideline warning. Okay, the players could have been on the field. We didn't have a get back coach back there. That should be Phil Russell. He should be the get back coach. <laughs> Listen, he was walking like Ric Flair after that last touchdown. And I don't blame him. He was styling, he was profiling, he was pointing fingers, taking names. But now there comes a time where you gotta sit back, keep your emotions in check, and play football. You know, as many vacations as Phil Russell took this summer, he's the Facebook king. I'm surprised he has time to be on our sidelines right now. He really is a man that travels. I mean, that guy, let's talk about it. I mean, he really is living life, isn't he? That penalty right there, Foister, absolutely killed us. Because now instead of third and four, it looks like we're going to be third and 104. Yeah, I mean, that's the same time it would take for me to drive to Belfry to get this first down. Well, let's see if we got something in our old bag of tricks here with Coach Hines. He's got to wheel up the old third and 30 place. So let's yeah. see what he's got in his hat. I mean, it's, it's pretty common. Like, uh, what are we going with, Statue of Liberty? Okay, here we go. Poston drops back, looks, passing it deep. Over the middle, he's got his receiver. Looks like it's number 12, breaking a tackle just short of the first down. Looks like that is my man, Bryson Duggar, baby. Man, he and Barrick Williams, what has happened? They look like two incredible hulks. Compared to what they were a year ago, 
Looks like it's about fourth and five and almost at midfield, but have you seen how Bryson Duggar dresses at school? Man, that kid is such a sharp-dressed young man. Yes, he is. He's totally laid back California. He's got the long flowing locks. I like it. And you know I, it's, I'm jealous I, I of I think hair. we just call him Sunshine after remember the Titans. Because Oh, here we go. Polston rolls to his left. Looking, looking, going deep. Got his receiver. Number five with a huge game, Braden Gibson. Wow. You know, Hines has went for it twice now in fourth down. He gambled and he paid off. That man does not need to go to the casino because he's either coming back with all the money or none of the money. <laughs> all right, Pulaski County's got all of Uncle Mo on their side right now. First and 10 at the 29 yard line. Drop back, goes to Poston, inside handoff, number 14 up the middle as the clock expires. Donovan Abbott still on his feet, fighting up the middle for all he can get. And it looks like he got almost nine yards. He looked like Monsell Allen. You remember that, the turtle at UK? He has no neck. He looked like Jerome the bus, the, the bus for the Steelers just running up the middle and busting people in the mouth. Where's all the Pittsburgh Steelers fans when you need them? Not here, baby, because it's Dallas Cowboys number one and number two. That's exactly right. And speaking of which, now that we end the quarter, Jane, I got to talk to you. We're, there's no question, you and I are both longtime diehard Dallas Cowboys fans. And, yes, sir, that's why I took C.D. Lamb with my first pick, but I did have three keepers in that league. But number 88 is going to run wild this yes. season. But I got to say, HBO's Hard Knocks. I love the show. I love the idea. And they're with my favorite team. But, James, it's been really boring. And I guess that's a good thing. And compared to the past, if there was a lot of drama and a lot of things going on, then we know things aren't going good. <laughs> you know what's not – boring is Dalton Murray and we're going to bring him live on the air here in just a minute because he's got all this broadcast experience and look he's wearing a maroon shirt I, I tonight. gotta say I gotta that? say he's baptized he's washed in the maroon and, and white and I'm you know my man he's got it going on I'm really excited that Dalton's here and I'm excited about everybody being here look at this you, crowd you know, you know what I'm excited about not to interrupt my main man but you know what I'm excited about we're starting the legend series tonight and we've got none other than number eight Jackson Mobley coming here at halftime. 10 minutes, one-on-one -on -one with me and you. Yeah, unfiltered, so guys stick around for that. Uh, Jackson Mobley, uh, it's like a box of chocolates. You just never know what you're going to get. I think I do. I think I'm going to just get charming, blue hair, blonde eyes. You know, he, for a man of his size, you talk about a guy that can tackle. But we'll talk more about that at halftime. we got a little Bob Seger, old-time yeah. rock and roll right now. We've got it going. If you're not here tonight, Shame on you. Get here for the Corbin game. Absolutely. And I'm looking down at the Pulaski County student section. Great turnout. And John Franklin's down there. And I don't know if that's a good thing. We will not mention John Franklin in football games. You know what I do want to mention, though? Johnny Hines wanted me to, to go ahead and brag on Julie Hornsby, the president of our Boosters Club. The field painting crew did an amazing job tonight, so thank you, Julie Hornsby and the field painting crew. Here we go to start the second quarter. First and 10, we have a timeout on the first play. That's very unusual, the second quarter. <laughs> Didn't like uh, what they saw or felt like, hey, you know what? We had such a good break in between the quarters. Give us a little bit more time to just sit back and uh, Ric Flair stance here. You know, Johnny Hines wants me to also brag on the, the, the field painting crew. He said Johnny Kane, immaculate. Wes Finley, Brandon Duggar, and Mr. Hayes, he said all did an amazing job on this field. So kudos to you. I'm telling you, it looks beautiful from, from up top. You guys have got yourself a full-time job, so you can no longer never not paint this field again because it's all yours. There is no doubt it's fantastic. And I got to say, I love the Punisher logo, but I have a – feeling that our front office is going to get called we're going to get sued right is that is it can we do this is this a thing maybe we just don't call it the punisher maybe we just come up with the playmaker you know we just come up with with a new, new name there uh, hey i love it don't get me wrong i love some punisher i love the idea and johnny hines i love his his hat and his cotton polo the my man is formal tonight and he doesn't care hey, you know I don't right care here either. second and one i'm gonna predict he goes to the end zone uh, I love it. Let's dial it up. This Let's man see. does not play it safe. We have one offset back, number 14, Donovan Abbott. In the shotgun, here we go. Tall sweep, I was wrong, number eight. We're going to cross Barrick Williams, first down and more. Cuts it back and gang tackled by Belfry, but not until he got the first down and six yards. Fantastic. Barrick really looked, I mean, he, he stayed dedicated to the play, which is good. That's what you need to do. 
Barrett's going to have a huge season. So he's already got in the end zone once tonight. Uh, it's going to be multiple trips. I would not be shocked if he got in here. I would love to see number 15 dialed back in there, too, where Antonio Palmer is. But, heck, let's get everybody on the offense a touchdown tonight. I'm a little biased. I agree with you, James. I, I'm, I'm definitely an Antonio Palmer Paulson fan. drops back, Paulson. and he is sacked for a loss. That looks like that was a design quarterback keeper, but they blew that play up in the backfield, and so that looked like that was probably a loss of three. So it looks like it's going to be second and 13. Mm. So I've definitely bragged all night on our offensive line. You know, getting a little winded because we've been on the field playing offense a lot, and that, that's a good thing. You know what, Brandon, though? If we go up 21-7 to seven here, we're going to send a message. And if you've got a running team like that that gets behind a couple touchdowns, you know, they could start panicking. And if they have to start passing the ball, favor Pulaski. Absolutely, you're right. Let's let them make mistakes. Dominic Abbott run up the middle. He's still on his feet. Three people it took to take him down, but looks like he picked up roughly five yards. It looks like it's probably going to be about third and third and six. You know, I like the decision to keep it on the ground right there. That's really wise as much as we're throwing it. You know, it gives keeps the defense honest there. All right, here we go. It looks like we're bringing out all of our wide receivers. Looks like we do have Dominic Abbott in the background. Looks like we've got uh, shotgun and we've got two re receivers out to the far side. Hand off, fake inside over the middle. Catch, Barrick Williams, Williams, touchdown. Uh, Barrick Williams catch, but Polson's throw right there. That was, Polson's looking good tonight. You know what, Barrick Williams looks so good. It, I don't think James Murray could cover him out there how good he looks right now. <laughs> I'm not really sure. As much coverage as James Murray has done tonight, James Murray can cover anybody in the world. I have no doubt Did you just it. see that light display after that touchdown? Oh, yeah. And it's going to be nice as the lights go down on Mother Nature when okay, our lights stay up. We're lining up for the extra point. Looks like it's Logan Corson. Our big soccer player comes up, kicks it straight through the upside. He had plenty of distance on that one. 21 to 7, Pulaski. Brandon, we really couldn't have got off to a better start than we have tonight. I tell you what, I got to talk to the coaches staff, and to say they're excited about this game this week was an understatement. But you know what? To say that anyone would have thought we'd have jumped out 21 to 7, I'm willing to believe that nobody here thought that except for those guys. They have been ready all week. Well, you know you say that, but you and I always believe we're going to jump out and take the lead because we're diehard Maroons and diehard Cowboy fans, so we believe in good football teams. Absolutely, and again, uh, here's the thing, guys. Facts are optional. We're having a good time. Me and Mr. Murray, we had some really good food. We love football. There's a nip in the air. If you're wanting stats and you're wanting just – you've come to the wrong place. So tune in if you want to have a good time, you want to watch Pulaski County, you want to watch us win. Uh, we'll talk to you about anything. We'll cover a lot of ground tonight. Oh, we'll cover this game like nobody else has ever covered, that's for sure. <laughs> Looks like we're about ready to kick off here to Belfry. And, man, I tell you what, if we could get another stop here, not only asking for a lot, but another stop and punch it down their throat again on the three A-State champs, 28-7 oh, to seven would be – oh, looks like it's a little pooch yeah, kit. Pooch I don't kit. know about that one. The Belfry got it their own 40. We've tackled them at the 42. Yeah. Uh, maybe we're afraid in Dixon in the back backfield. I don't know, but uh, let's go ahead. We've held them twice already, and let's see if we can't make it three times in a row. Our defense has been really, really sharp tonight. Let's see if they can just keep that going. Uh, I'm looking across the field to Belfry's sideline, and it may be correlated with the score, but – they're really angry, James. Look, very angry coaching staff. Over there. Listen, if I drove for 96 hours and I was down 14 <laughs> points this early too, you better believe I would be upset. But right now, you and I are pretty happy. We're pretty much might yeah. be the happiest guys besides Johnny oh, Hines on the whole field. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So let's see what we can do here. Let's just keep uh, Dixon in check. 25-year-old running back. Taking the snaps, taking the runs for Belfry. You know what? I'm going to start bragging on some defensive players here. Looks like number one stretches him out wide. He cuts it back up the middle. Looks like he's going to get about four yards. And number 50 just brought the hammer, baby. Looks like Leighton Abbott did a great tackle on the sideline. So, good job, Mr. Abbott. Looks like we're going to have about a second and six, maybe. Leighton has been Josh Allen tonight. He's been all over the field. I just hope he can keep this up. He's been making a lot of plays, a lot of tackles for us. Uh, let's just keep that going. Keep that hey, listen, going. and for you non-UK fans, that's the UK Josh Allen. That's not the Josh Allen, the, the Buffalo Bills quarterback. Okay, let's make that oh, clear. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I got I to gotta keep that in mind for sure. Okay, looks like number three for Belfry. Looks like he's lined up in the backfield. The quarterback sets the play in motion, hands it off to number seven. Oh, my mm. gosh, big hole. This is bad, cutting up the sideline. Mm. And he's already gained about 35 yards before he gets tackled. 
I did not like that little run right there, but it was a nice play for Belfry on that inside handoff. Caught us by surprise. I don't he, want to see that again. He's definitely a nice compliment to Dixon. Uh, nice run there. Let's see who number seven for Belfry is. Looks like that is Zane. And look, you'll never believe this last name, Hatfield. Oh, wow. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that. West Virginia side. He, I'm willing to bet he's probably from West Virginia. Well, who, who's to say? Hey, listen, we are the McCoy fans because we're the Kentucky side, okay? So let's go ahead and take out the Hatfields tonight. <laughs> Number seven, you're done. <laughs> Absolutely. So, All right. Here we get ready. Surprise. It's a handoff again. Number 11 sweeps near us. They string and penalty flag. I sure hope that is on Belfry. I sure hope so. Number 11, Caden Woolham. We're waiting on the flag on the near sideline. Hopefully it's holding. Looks like that is the call. Right. So we finally get the Zebras on our side All for right. once. I love it. I love it. They've uh, really been active on the maroon side tonight. I don't know. Um, but that's good to see that that plays out for us, get our defense a chance to uh, get recomposed here and uh, make some plays and let's get the ball back. Looks like that is a big penalty flag. It's going to back them up. It looks like it's probably first and maybe 21, first and 22. Absolutely. They're running between the tackles, so they're really going for uh, the boxer mentality, trying to see if they can get us fatigue and wear us out. Looks like they set up the play. I'm going to guess run. I'll let you guess whatever play you want to guess, but I'm going to guess inside handoff. Let's see what the play is. They are. And it is inside handoff to number five. Oh, my gosh, what a surprise. Looks like he's got about six, seven yards up the middle, and we've got about five people gain tackling. Looks like number seven, Ryan Dyes, one of the first ones in on the tackle. They are all in on 1950s style uh, football, but you know what? It's worked for them. Uh, very good tradition at Belfry. But you know what? I like our air raid so much better to go ahead and, and score quickly. I don't like this methodical slow down. This is like playing basketball and winning 30 to 26. Absolutely. It's been so much fun to watch PC's offense. And, I, and kudos to the coaching staff for dialing up this uh, uh, new offense here. Okay, running outside by the quarterback. Good little cut up the middle, and he has found a seam for a first down, and he just steam tackles. Mm. Touchdown. That is a missed tackle. Number two, Brady Kane, my man, you've got to wrap him up right there, one-on-one -on -one in the backfield. It was a big miss. We had we had the guys in, in the spots that they needed to make the play. We just couldn't make the tackle, and that's going to come back on us. That's a little disappointing, though, for first and 22 and two plays later, and they're in the end zone. So we've got to do a little better definitely tackling like that. So hopefully Johnny Hines and Coach Gobby goes ahead and tells these players to, you know, wrap them up, don't make the big hit, but bring them down. Kudos to Belfry. They said, we're going to run the ball. And this is what we're doing. We're going to tell you which direction we're going. Now try to stop us. Uh, that's quite a statement. Extra point is up, and it hits up right. No good. That may be big later on this game. Mr. Oh, yeah. 8.29 left in the game. The score, Pulaski 21, Belfry 13. I'll tell you what, after the week we've had weather-wise, you couldn't ask for a better no, night here. Looks absolutely fantastic. A nip is in the air. We're feeling pretty good. Great crowd again here tonight, Pulaski County Field for opening game, senior night. A lot of things going on, but nonetheless, so far so good. Pulaski County's got the lead still, eight minutes left to go in the second quarter. I really think we need a big answer right here because I don't want to go in halftime and have them be down a point or it potentially be tied. Um, you know, after a 17-hour bus ride and you're down a couple touchdowns at halftime, it may get you defeated. And you, you may be just saying, hey, I just want to get back on the bus and get back home and I just want to lay in bed and, and uh, rest up. Uh, Pulaski's beat my butt and I just want to recover. You know, I want my electrolytes yes. back in the body. Absolutely. We've not been playing conservative all night long. And one thing's got to be said for the scheduling for this game. We said, you know what, no cupcakes. We are playing the best, the number one team in 3A football. So one thing's for sure, win or lose for both teams tonight, you're going to know who you are and where you're at. So that's the exciting part. So far, you got to feel pretty good if you're a Pulaski County fan of what you're seeing so far. Here we go, kickoff. Looks like we've got it, number 26 running up the middle. Gets tackled at the 37-yard line, so the return was Cody Nicholas. I'm glad to see him back. Little Allie Nichols done a good job here on the return. Looks like he got about 10 yards on the return, and it's first and 10. Pulaski from the 33-yard line. Now it looks like we're moving at 37-yard line. So here we go. Let's see if Polston can uh, keep the momentum going on the offensive side of the ball. So far tonight he's looked really good, really composed, really poised, made really good decisions. 
we need it to keep going. Okay, looks like we get in the shotgun formation again. Looks like he's got 14 off center. Donovan Abbott lined up. We've also got another back in the backfield. Looks like Barrick Williams goes in motion, goes out to the Belfry side, drops back, quick pass, number 16. Chandler Gobby nice. takes it and gets about seven yards on first down. So I'll take seven yards on a play all day long. He split the tackles there really nicely and got a couple of extra yards for his effort. So that, that's huge. Second and three, Pulaski, I would love. Looks like the time clock is 8.18, so we still got half the second quarter left. So here we go, second and three, we're snapping it. Polson drops back, rolling to his left, passes, first down, Gobby again on the strong side, breaks three tackles, going down the sideline, breaks another tackle. Number seven finally runs him out of down, but it looks like it's a gain of 30 plus yards. Really nice play, really nice decision, really nice catch, really nice run. It was all around a great, uh, dial up play right there for PC. You know what? I'm becoming a big Chandler Gobby fan. I'm going to have to look this kid up at school because I've not had him in class yet. But I'm telling Absolutely. you what, it looks like he's breaking some tackles and, uh, you know, breaking ankles and taking names. Yes, I'm impressed by my man. Ch uh, Here we Tyson go. Hand off. Finally got a running play. Looks like number 14, Donovan Abbott up the middle. Looks like he gets probably five yards on first down. All right, so we're creeping in here close to the red zone. Let's see if we can uh, capitalize in these situations. Did you say red zone knowing it's the maroon zone? Oh, absolutely. So far, yeah. We're not Dirty Bird Cardinals fans here. Absolutely. I'm, my mistake. And Belfry, that will never Belfry's happen has got again. way too much red on. I mean, that's, that's just putrid color. So, yeah. we, we like the maroon over here. Okay, looks like we're dropping back. Poston's got it. Fakes the handoff. Throws it strong side. Barrick Williams going up the sideline. Gets – oh, he just trucks that defender right there. Look like number 15. He's going to say, know my name, Blake Hurley. You're going to know my name. First down, Barrick Williams and Pulaski. I'll tell you what, big time players make big time plays. And Barrick Williams showing out tonight, opening night here, and you, you can't say enough about him. You know, he's already got several college scholarships. We'll have to bring that up here late, nice. later in the second half. But I can see why, because I want that kid on my team. Yeah, any day. Give here me a go. Barrick Williams. Polson drops back, fakes it. He's got a defender. He takes it, runs it to the strong side, and drops down. Looks like probably a loss of one. So it looks like we're going to be second and 11 or second and 12. PC has done a really good job all night of being in really good field position. So you got to like this if you're the coaching staff of knowing all the options and, and keeping that in mind for the second half of what it is that you can do to keep moving the ball. Keep scoring points against this team because you can't get you can't get conservative. Here we go. Snap comes back to Polston, fakes the handoff. No, he actually gets it. Dominic Abbott up the middle and looks like he gets about seven yards and looks like it's going to be third and six. Abbott is another one that has that crazy California style long golden locks hair. Uh, kudos to the Pulaski County football uh, players and their hairdos. Uh, I'm kind of jealous, I guess, but long flowing locks. Uh, looks nice. I'm telling you what, we've got some beef on that old line this year. I'm looking down there and I'm looking like, man, I don't want those guys hitting me because I don't want to be pancake. But looks like we've got a pretty good old line. Polson drops back on third and seven. Looks like he's going to pass it. Oh, look at the running lane right up the middle. He recognizes it, takes off, and trots down to the 10-yard line. Looks like it's going to be first and goal, Pulaski County Maroons. Great decision there by, by Polson. Man, again, he's looked so good and poised in the pocket. Especially when, when, when the defense collapses on him, he's made good decisions tonight. You know, it sort of looked like Moses right there. It looked like the Red Sea open, and he's like, oh, my God, this is wide open. And it was. You know, we get to see tremendous holes up here, and I think James Murray could have took that for six, seven yards on that carry. Come to Maroon Sports Network for not only your football Pulaski needs, but your biblical references, <laughs> Mr. Murray, on that one. I may be done with the one, so we'll see. Here we go. <laughs> Drew Polston's got it. First and goal. Actually, it looks like first and ten from the 12. Looks like inside handoff. Number 14, Donovan Abbott, break. Takes a tackle, still going down. Tremendous run. He just trucked number 14. Alex Long, don't come try and tackle me. Number 14 runs over number 14. And his feet never stopped. He kept moving, even amongst the first amount of contact. He kept moving. And look what it, look what it got you. It paid off. You know, that's, that's a great viewpoint right there because, yes, his foot, feet never quit right there. He kept churning, churning, churning. Good things happen. Now we've got second and two, looks like, from the – Six-yard line, handoff Abbott again, try to reward him. He runs it up the middle. Looks like he is tackled down at the one-yard line. Looks like it's going to be short of the first down, but looks like it's going to be third and probably inches. 
Okay, if you're PC, you got to score here. I mean, we got to go seven, and we need this. Never mind. They gave them the first down. That is huge. First and goal from the one yard line. I would bring in the jumbo package now, and I would say, hey, let's just play a little beef on beef right here. So now Coach Hines got a decision to make. Looks like Godby, uh, Coach Russell, and the staff really working that sideline, seeing what they can come up with here. You know, I'd probably just run Stephen Godby and put him as emergency running back, and I, I guarantee he could punch it in. I think he's got three more years of eligibility, right? <laughs> Looks like we have a timeout on the field. Pulaski County's up 21 to 13 with four minutes and 38 seconds left. Right. We're in really good position right here if you're a Pulaski County uh, fan watching, which hopefully everybody is. And if you're not, hey, welcome aboard. Welcome to Maroon Sports Network. We got a little something for everybody. So glad for you to join us. You know, after ESPN probably finds this broadcast and pulls you and I off the air, you know, I'm probably not going to leave the Pulaski County community, so I'm going to have to decline it. It's going to break my heart. Uh, so ESPN, don't even give me the invitation. If you want to give Brandon Foyce an invitation, he may take it because I know he comes in at 530 in the morning when the lights are still on. He works many overtime hours, but that man – He's amazing. He's got a voice of a god. So Listen. go ahead and pick Brandon Forster. Listen, I, 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 I don't want to hear it, James, because here's the deal. I'm not going anywhere unless it's it, 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 it's it's all of us or none. All right. Oh, oh this, this this squad oh, that you gosh. got here. Let, let's let's talk about my guys here. I mean, technology. This is Mason, life intervenes. And Blanco sitting right here running this. Uh, We've got Allie and and uh, well, we better get back to the game. First and go inside handoff. Looks like Abbott comes up the middle and touchdown Maroons. All right, you gotta love that. The Maroons are now up two touchdowns and these lights are amazing. Watch them go off. Watch that Punisher, how good it looks like. I'm gonna get used to this light show, baby. Hopefully we'll have a bunch more of that tonight. Full moon creeping over the horizon. Man, th this is gonna be a special night. It's setting up to be. Here we go, we line up for the extra point. Logan Corson is ready to go. The PAT's lined up, down, and that kid has got leg for days, baby. That is so good. We've got a kicker, and he looks like the best thing since Derek Burgett, baby. He looks amazing, and Derek went to Union on a scholarship. Oh, wow. So it's 28-13, but I, I want to go back to what we were saying here, and Pulaski County's got to leave. We're playing great, but nothing can be said. It's short of an understatement. Everything that happened possibly tonight could happen. And, and I saw that. This staff, this group of guys, and Mr. Murray's leadership, calm, poised, collected. I'm afraid my head would have exploded if this would have been me. But you know what? All the things that happened did, and here we are online and making And it's all because of you. No, it's because of these kids. So, and you know, I got to thank Mr. Braun and Mr. Miller and Mr. McAdish and everybody else that made our dream MSN possible tonight. I'm going to bring the broadcast over and let's see how far the apple falls from the tree. Let's bring on Dalton Murray to run the rest of this second quarter with you. What do you say, big guy? Let's, let's, let's bring on the Dalton Monster because we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to cover. Uh, again, I'm Mr. Foister, Brand Foister here. Happy to be here alongside the Maroon Sports Network. Dalton coming in here. Looking good. He's got a hat on. He's Apple Watch smiling. Dalton, how are you? I'm good. I'm coming in hot. I'm ready. No preparation. I'm just ready to go because I got Brandon Foyster with me. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a good thing in your favor, but you know what? Facts are optional tonight again, so uh, we're going to call the game. We're going to have a good time. Uh, win or lose, we still love football. It's August 20th, and it feels like it's September 20th. I love it. It's definitely trending that direction. NFL's getting started. High school's here. College is coming here soon. It's football season, and that's the best time of year. So let's talk. So NFL, who are you watching? Who's your team, Dalton? Who's the surprise team? Is Tom Brady going to do the unpredictable again? Um, unfortunately, I'm a Texans fan, so a lot of despair to come this season. But luckily, I am a big fantasy football player, so I got a lot of individual players to watch for, a lot of teams to keep me interested throughout the season. You know, I, I love fantasy football, but it got to be where it was one of those things where I felt like over the years, just being honest, just us talking, because nobody's watching, nobody's listening, it's just us talking, right, Dalton? It got to the point where it felt like I wasn't enjoying it very much. When something turns out to be homework and then I'm stressed out watching an NFL game, I feel like I'm in it for the wrong reason. So I had 
to take a year off from fantasy football. But, you know, you're not here to listen to my personal story with fantasy football. Fantasy football is fantastic. And you know what's a fantasy right now that we might be living in that could be a reality is Pulaski County is putting it on the number one team in 3A high school. They've, here's the kickoff. We've got it off to Belfry. They've received it along about the 36. I'm a little surprised with how the game's going so far. I thought Belfry was a lot better than this, honestly, watching WKYT last night. And they said Belfry was better than Pulaski County. So maybe Johnny Hines saw the broadcast and he got some motivation from that. I'm willing to bet that that's exactly what it is. You got that chip. You got that chip on your shoulders, and you want to prove everybody uh, wrong, and you got you got a statement to make. Uh, and you know what? I'm I'm glad to be on that on that side of it. All right, Belfry's going to line up here to take the play. Whistles blown by the zebras. Looks like we got some movement uh, from all signs pointing. Looks like it's on PC, but we're gonna we're gonna go to the refs and see. It's like a false start, maybe. Definitely some pre-snap movement. Okay. Illegal substitution. Illegal. <laughs> you know, People I'm running off the sideline. You know, Dalton, I'm wondering how long is it going to be before they start instituting instant replay in high school? Because, you know, you watch an NFL game, it's eight hours long. And it almost kills the game for me when I'm watching it. So, anyway, here we are, here we are back to action. Belfry's got the ball. Handoff up the middle. Belfry likes to run the football. Stop for short to no game. This uh, second and eight coming up here for us. Maroons really keeping the momentum going. Here we go. Beginning second down, second and probably second and eight, second and nine. Maybe Belfry did not get a lot on that first down run. Game script going exactly how you want it for Pulaski County, forcing them to run. Fumble on the play, and it looks like Pulaski has recovered it. PC football at the 40-yard line. Second forced fumble for Pulaski County already tonight. You know, I'm reminded of the game last year. Belfry put the ball on the ground a couple of times at their place. We couldn't capitalize. Right now, it's the reverse of that story. A year later, PC's looking for their first win against Belfry. Game is going perfectly for Johnny Hines and the Maroons right now. If you're playing a running football team, you want to get ahead early because they don't have the firepower to get back in the game quickly. You're forcing them to run and they can't even hold on to the ball. That's even better. All right. Pulaski with the football now. Excited to see what we can do. All right, Pulaski set to take the snap here, first and 10 at their, at Belfry's 40 yard line actually. Got the fumble in opponent territory. Putting number two in motion, Tiger takes the snap, backfield throw, and it's a gadget play. Down the middle, number eight takes it all the way to the five yard line. That was a pretty nifty play there for us. So what'd you think about that? They are really rolling the dice tonight and watching that play unfold in slow motion. Wow, what? What a gutsy call there from our coaching staff. Johnny Hines is reaching deep into the bag tonight, pulling out a flea flicker of sorts. You throw it to the receiver in the backfield who then makes another pass. And it was a bomb for 35 yards. Polson throws it number 10 easily in the end zone. Makes a couple of guys miss. Pulaski County's putting it on Belfry 35 to 14. Jericho Dixon with the catch. Not another nice receiver that we got in our back pocket there. Good compliment for Polson this year to throw to. I'm telling you, this light show is pretty awesome for us, sir. The darker it gets, the more awesome it looks. I feel like I'm at a Disney theme park. I'm not going to lie. It's almost the same thing. It's pretty nice. It's, uh, it's almost a little surreal. And uh, kudos to uh, the board uh, for making the decision to uh, get this installed. It looks great. Brandon Forster, what do you think about a 22-point lead with three and a half minutes to go in the first half? You know, again, I, I don't know why I'm shocked. And surprised, but I am. But I tell you, some people here who are not, it's our coaching staff. They've really prepped. 
They've been focused. They've been zoned in all week. And the hard part's over. The guys put in the work all week in terrible weather conditions. And here they are. It's paying off. Getting ready for a kickoff. They keep playing the Ric Flair music. I think we're trying to send a message to Belfry. You think you're the man because you're in 3A, but you got to beat the man in 5A first. Ric Flair, uh, none other than the 16-time world champion WWE Hall of Famer. Uh, also went the distance in the 1992 Royal Rumble where he was the second pick. Went all the way to win the uh, championship that night in January. SummerSlam tomorrow, Brandon Forster, but it looks like Pulaski County is getting started early with a smackdown of their own tonight. Great play. If the defense can stop Another him, the ball's fumble. on the ground again. Another fumble. Does Pulaski have it again? They do. Wow. Wow. Uh, what an unbelievable turn here. If you, How many turnovers is that for Belfry? Is that That's their fourth? Three. 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 Fumbles, force, and return for Pulaski County tonight. Flag. There is a flag. Uh, looks like a Belfry lot of celebration. Players. Some Belfry players on Pulaski's sideline. Another flag has just come out. This has to be on number seven, talking to the ref. Belfry's upset at the Zebras, but they're losing... They can't be mad at the Zebras for losing. They're losing. <laughs> I've got a really unpopular opinion here, and I'm going to go for it. Uh, first off, in any sport, basketball, football, soccer, hockey, underwater basket weaving, anytime there's offsetting double fouls, I think that's lame. I think you need to make a decision. You need to say what it was. You need to call the foul. And so when we move on, saying it on both teams just means you're trying to give both teams a trophy. This life ain't fair. Make a decision. That's all that I ask. Double fouls are lame. I think if you're going to call two and they offset, why even call it to begin with? I think that's a waste of time. Uh, I, that's a great point. But anyway, nonetheless, Pulaski County back in a position here uh, where they've recovered a fumble with the ball three minutes before halftime. Pulaski defense looks like the maroon people eaters tonight, Brendan Forster. This defense is playing out of their minds. Our sideline is loving it. There's a lot of positive energy down there. Our coaching staff, so proud of them. So proud of the school. So proud of uh, everyone who's came out to watch this. An unbelievable matchup tonight because, again, no cupcakes here. Here we go, Pulaski getting set up here at the 13-yard line in great position to score. If I was Johnny Hines, I want to score on this play right here. And it looks like he's going for it. Five wide. Paulson set to take the snap. He's got it. He's looking. Clean pocket. He takes it himself. Going to the left. Put a little juke on. And he fumbles. Oh, no. Who's got the ball? Belfry's got the ball. So we gave one back. Got a little greedy there. Looks like uh, we got fancy there. And, uh, and, and in the meantime, we were uh, carrying around the ball like a loaf of bread. Put it on the ground. Polson's played good all night, though. He is looking good. A little concerned with the running. You know, he's got the injury history. Maybe you don't want him running like that. That's true. That's true. And, you know, an unbelievable story. A lot of stories from this Pulaski County football side. Really, story of redemption. Got Polson coming back. You got Antonio Palmer already making a play tonight, changing things around. You know, these guys, to say that they've been through, and then you put on top of playing in a pandemic last year where everything was just strange. This is really quite a team of really just staying true, staying resilient, staying the path. And I think that's paying off here tonight for us. So you band together after a tough year, and it shows you're ready to play that first game the next season. You felt like you were maybe slided. You didn't have your starting quarterback. You finally get him healthy, and you're just chomping at the bit for that first game, and it's showing. Belfry is about to take the snap here on about their own one or two yard line. A safety here would be enormous. But they run the ball, surprised, get about big hit right there. Who was that, number 50? Leighton Abbott again, just all over the field tonight making tackles. 
Johnny Hines with the timeout here. Belfry still in their own territory. I don't think they've even made it to the 10 yard line yet. So they are in a peculiar situation, especially for a team that you know they want to pound the rock. They're not going to air it out when they need yardage. They're still going to stay true to that bell cow strategy. Yeah, and to say that that style is lame, I, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but really what we're trying to do here is just keep our defense fresh. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, uh, a jog. You know, it's a marathon. It's, it's not a sprint. So we're trying to make sure your guys are healthy and that, you know, fatigue doesn't come into play because that's, that's Belfry's game plan. They want to wear you out. They really uh, – they want to make you tired. They want to make the defense lose their legs a little bit, but Pulaski's responding. They're staying resilient. They're forcing turnovers, and Belfry's strategy's not working so far. So let's see what they can cook up here on – what is it, third down? Third and five, it looks like. It's very humid out here tonight. Still a little sticky. See what happens. Unfortunately for Belfry, their hands are not sticky to the football so far in the game. A little sweep here to number seven. Looks like he is awfully close to that first down marker. See, it's going to be close. Hatfield again with the carry. He's been a nice compliment to Dixon tonight. As they're mixing it up, keeping everything. Now it's first and ten for sure for Belfry. Belfry gets the first down here. A little bit past their own 10 yard line, probably about the 14. So WWE SummerSlam is getting ready to come up here in a couple weeks. Uh, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? It's All right, tomorrow. shows you where I've been living at. So, I mean, let's talk about WWE SummerSlam here a little bit as we get going here. But right now, Belfry's going to take the snap. Run it up the gut, probably about a five yard gain here. Looks like Belfry is just Going to play it conservative here. Probably not going to take any chances, but we'll see. A minute 40 to go before halftime, and they're still milking this clock. They're still running the ball. If that doesn't show you that they are not going to air it out, I don't know what will. Definitely not one of their strengths, but it's in, it's in our favor. Another handoff here. This is the situation that you need tempo. You need to split those receivers out, and they're still not doing it. So I don't know what the strategy is to get back into this game. You're down 22, you need points, and you need them fast. And they're not playing that way. Yeah, it's uh, definitely looking like they're, they're playing now for the second half. But, again, you know, you came out and both teams hit hard, hit fast, scored fast, and then all of a sudden PC lightning in a bottle. Oh, big sack right here. Number 33. Who's 33? Number Trey Hornsby just obliterated Belfry's quarterback there. Maybe that's why they don't drop back. Yeah, that was a, that was a big play. Trey Hornsby showing out on the defensive line. Our defense all night long tonight. I'm, I'm quite impressed. A lot of work on that defensive line. A lot of, a lot of work on our DBs. They really put in the work this week. It's paying off. 17 seconds left. Doesn't look like we may not get this punt off here before halftime. Looks like Belfry's content with giving PC the 22-point lead going into halftime. Two seconds left. We're not going to get a snap off. Looks like a delay a game penalty here with 1.7 seconds left in the first half. PC up 35-13 here with 1.7 left in the first half. Friday night lights are on. Man, football is back. And what an exciting time. Friday night SmackDown currently airing on Fox and also happening live at PC Stadium. SummerSlam tomorrow, Brandon Forster. John Cena is back. Yeah, so uh, I haven't got to pay attention to wrestling too much. But, of course, you know, the big story, and uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit tonight, is kind of lacking some star power. But they bring back their one star with John Cena. I, I'm just trying to see 
what kind of rabbit they got in the, the hat that they're going to pull out because right now you've got a neighboring competition with AEW and they're showing out and pulling out all the stops. So it's keeping everything honest. But enough about the wrestling. Let's talk about the Cates, all right? UK football, Mark Stoops, Liam Cohn. They're going to start in a few weeks, and I'm really excited. But right here, back to PC football. Belfry taking the snap, and they run a fake punt of sorts. Run up the middle. They get a few yards, but PC gets the tackle at the 20-yard line, and that takes us to halftime. All right, so right now it's 35-13 at PC football. It's halftime. Coach Hines is going to go in, try to get his guys focused, come back out in the second half, and we are back with the halftime show with you where we'll have none other, and I'm really excited about this. Here we are live on the air with my man, number eight, Jackson Mobley. We've started a brand new legend series, and the first legend that Mr. Forster and I have chosen is none other than number eight, Jackson Mobley. Jackson, first off, let's talk a little bit about your high school career. T today, I talked to Johnny Hines. I said, Johnny Hines, you don't know this. I talked to Johnny Hines. I said, Coach, tell me something that you would say to Jackson Mobley. And he said, tell him this. Any time that I needed a big defensive play, whether it was a tackle for loss, a sack, a fumble, I knew that number eight was going to make that play for me in the backfield. How does that make you feel? Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I remember every Friday, day, every Friday he'd uh, come up to me and tell me, firefighters are really good at putting fires out. And when people get really cheerful and they do good on the offensive side of the ball, you got to be a firefighter and put the fire out. So now I'll text him every Friday and say, make sure that defense puts the fire out. So that makes a lot of sense that he'd say that. So, so Jackson, here we go. I mean, it says one thing. I mean, here you are. First off, you're looking good, my man. Like, <laughs> look at this. Let's, let's just go ahead and address that right off. And, and you know, that's not me wooing let's on you or anything. Yeah, let's get that elephant out of the room. You look great, man. Uh, you haven't aged a bit. But really, in this situation, 
to say legends that we're starting off with with talking about in the series because there's no doubt when you think of legends it's got to be Jackson Mobley amongst others and that's awesome to start this off but when we get into it here we are so many years later you're back here's the place where you played where you grew up where you, you graduated high school and now you're coaching so I mean and, and 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 to throw into your resume to pad your resume even more collegiate player Gosh, I mean, that's got to be exciting to come back here, right? Give back to the community. <laughs> that's uh, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I figured it up one time when I was in college. I am 96 and 11 in the last eight years of football. So I've played a lot of football. And then you add last two years with seventh and eighth grade at middle school coaching. We went 12 and 2 and 13 and 1 last year and lost in the state championship in both grades and I mean I, mean, I played a lot of football and so just you know being able to be on the legend series I have a, I guess I have a pretty pretty decent resume I like to tell the kids first day of practice because I'm I'm so I'm young and all these kids in middle school just kind of look at me like another friend I'm like guys I know what I'm talking about when it comes to football I've played a lot of football and uh, so it's nice to get to brag on myself with the kids every year because they don't know Coach Mobley as they just know me as Coach Mobley. But when I get to talking to them, then they start respecting me, and it's fun to brag about that kind of stuff. You know, Jackson, we get out there, and if I had you in practice, you know, we'll start talking about Northern Middle football here in a few minutes. But I'd probably get lost in your blue eyes, and I'd probably forget what you said, and I would probably – do you ever get mad at your players, you know, for just missing plays just because they didn't understood what you said? They might have got lost. So I want you to overlook that in the future, okay? We go back in and we talk about PC football. During your time here, Forster and I went to every home game. And I'm telling you what, it was such a fun time for PC football. If I'm not mistaken, didn't your resume add a state championship and three state runner-up finishes in your tenure? I, uh, I have – a state championship in 2014, the state runners up in 13, 15, and 16. Also have first team all state 13, 14, 15, and 16. And I hold the school record for the most hammer awards with 17. Uh, broken, when I broke it, it was Winston Hines' record. And Coach Hines didn't realize I broke it until after I told him. So that, that's kind of like, that's my high school resume. And I'm very proud about the hammer awards because no one breaks Winston's records here. But before we go over to Forster with this next question, you know, we know what the hammer award is, but they may not know what the hammer award is. So bring it to us. What is hammer award, big guy? <laughs> uh, you go to Google, type my name in, type in huddle. You can see it's the first clip. It's the hardest hit, the most, the most vicious, really just makes moms cry for their kids hit. Uh, Bourbon County, my senior year, swing route to the running back. I hit him before the ball even got there. Coach Jeff Roberts was a middle school coach. He was running the chains. He said the running back came off the field, took his helmet off, and said, Dad, I quit, and they left the field. <laughs> Pretty nice. <laughs> that is an awesome story. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to get to my next question, but first off, Maroon Sports Network is kicking off here tonight. They're, to say that there's been some technological difficulties is an understatement, but right now i got to wonder, the, the other elephant in the room, what is going on in this place? This door is swung open 25 times while we're talking to a legend. People with the face. There's more traffic up here than there is down there on the football field. You, you see stands. all the ladies waving at him when was, they open yeah. the door. So it's it was, crazy. We well, need security up in here. Well, they've hit Dalton a few times, and I, I hate that because they keep looking. They hit him, and they'll peek in here, and they'll see him be like, ooh, and then they kind of just head out of the room. And, it, and I hate it because he's missing so many opportunities. Because he's just, you know, he's in awe. I can see him over there. He's in awe. Have you got? Have you ever thought about a life coach position and, and your other resume of things that you can add on, like relationships? You can help um, my son with some of these people coming through the door. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I mean, I really considered it. I, I, I kind of struggle in that aspect of myself. I, uh, I hope Jill's not watching, but I, I cannot keep a girlfriend for longer than like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> So, so All right. two weeks from now, ladies, come looking for him. What we're trying to so say. your career, it is what it is. And if someone doesn't know, shame on them. But uh, let's, let's just get into other things, like, as we've already started in your life. What's, what's going on? Like, what, like, you know, this year has been weird, okay? We've, we're, we're living in a pandemic. We're ignoring that we're in a pandemic right now, but we most certainly are. We're playing in it. But here we are. What, what are you doing, Jackson, when, you know, the cameras and the lights are off? Like, what are you watching? What are you listening to? Give me, take me into a moment where if you got to set up your own time, what, what's Jackson doing? Well, uh, 4 a.m. wake up, two-mile run. Work, no, I'm just kidding. 5.30 wake up, go to work. I really enjoy my job, so I go to work, get off at 3.30, um, go home. I've been on a big Bang Theory kick. Sheldon cracks me up. 
I see a lot of myself in him. Mainly the brains. Uh, also kidding. Murray and Forster both know that. How I passed Mr. Forster's class, I don't know. Uh, I was really good at football. Really good at football. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what Jackson, coming back to things, we're going to talk about the Legend Series, but you played with so many players that were a big part of that. Who was maybe the one player on the team that you think maybe brought it to practice every day and push people like Jackson Mobley did? It could be somebody on the offensive side of the ball or it could have been your brother on defense because, you know, speaking about all these players, I can mention all of them, but I'm a huge number 44 Mason Helton fan. I'm telling you, 8 and 44 were my boys back in high school. So we got anything to say maybe about number 44 or anybody else on that team that you want to give a shout-out to? Well, you know, I got, I got to shout Mason out. He's my best friend. He was, I was the best man in his wedding. He might be the best man of mine if that day ever comes. Uh, well, he will be if that day ever comes. But uh, Mason was a good—he was a great player. He was a great practice player. But he was a stud, and he knew it. So sometimes Mondays, maybe Tuesdays, on into Wednesdays, he would just go through practice. So would I. But one player that always brought it every day, Matt Hendricks probably. I mean, Matt Hendricks is a coach now at PC, and he was—he walked in. He knew that he was Riley's backup at quarterback. And he knew that he had to play tight end too. He got asked to play tight end after playing quarterback for a year, and he stepped up. And he was on—he was a starting tight end for the state championship team my senior year. And he—he he really is excited. He's always positive, and he was ready to come to practice every day. And it's great to see him now at the high school level coaching those kids. You know, every day in the hallway, I'm just going to call him Matty Ice, baby, because I'm going back to the high school days. You know, I had Matty Ice in class. That's right. So it's nice to have these guys come back to PC. Forster, hit him up, man, with another hard question. Sure. I, not so much about the hard questions, the heavy hitters. Like uh, As we said tonight, facts are going to be optional. If you're going to come here to listen to stats and all that stuff, you probably need to go somewhere else. We're just going to have a good time. But that, that, that takes me into my question I want to talk to you. You've played on the biggest stage as far as Kentucky State uh, high school football. Tonight – Opening football of the season, you got a number one team. Take me into that situation, like, from your experience. What are you doing in the day before you come in to like our players are tonight and they come in against the number one team of Belfry? All right, well, my senior year, let's go senior year. First period, I had English with Miss Odom. <laughs> then I spent the rest of the five periods in Miss Murray's class. I laid in the middle room, and he knew it was Friday. Please, Mr. Mackage, don't believe these stories. Mr. McInnitch, I was really good. <laughs> Mr. Murray, you know, I, I had his class, I think, second, third, and fourth in high school. And I went in there second period. I did my work for his second period class and then went to the middle room and hung out, laid on the floor. He would sometimes wake me up fifth period, be like, hey, locker room, go to the locker room. I'd sit there. And I was not a big talker. I'm, I don't get hyped and motivated through yelling, screaming, loud music. I was just put my headphones in. And uh, put a t I put a towel over the thing in my locker and just sit back and just chill, and just not talk. We'd go into the auditorium before the home game, and we I'd put a pillow behind my head and fall asleep. Wake up, get taped, game time. You know, and, and switching things, I don't get to talk to my boy here a whole lot outside of things, but he knows he's always going to be a legend in Mr. Murray, Mr. Forster's book. But, you know, one thing, the coolest thing I think Johnny Hine did several years ago was that he had you guys walk around and do different things to the teachers. And I think you borrowed Josh Anderson's baseball jersey. And I want you to know, Mr. Murray still got that hanging up. He still thinks of Jackson Mobley, so if you need it back, let me know. But you loaned it to me one time for Maroon Day or, or whatever for Senior Day. And I've still got that number eight jersey. And you know, we talk about things. I'm gonna switch a little bit to baseball because now you know where I'm going. I wish I had a pitcher to bring up, but you had an injury in center field that was as rough as any collision that you will ever have on the football field. Matter of fact, people might have thought you were dead when you had that collision and had to go out on the stretcher. You want, And I know it brings back bad memories, but you want to talk a little bit about the baseball program and maybe that big hit that you had back in center field back in the day? Uh, I'm going to have to tell Logan Wesley to listen to this because that's the hardest I've ever been hit. I played a lot of football. I still don't remember what happened on that play. I was playing center field, ball was hitting the gap. I dove, woke up on the stretcher, asked for a dip. My mom hit me, asked for a cigarette. She also hit me. I don't even smoke. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, but the baseball program here is really, when I first started, it was, it was struggling. You know, it was Gomer, Jacob Denny, senior year, and I loved him. He's like an older brother to me, so I wanted to really go out with a bang, and we didn't get it done. And then Mr. Uh, Coach Masson stepped down. We got Josh Anderson. 
He was great. He turned that program around. He stepped down to be with his kids. And now Kent Mayfield really turned that program around, and I'm excited to see the future for that program. Well, real quick, I, I know you got to go, and thank you for taking some time to spend with us. We're going to get to the second half. But, Jackson, i, I got to say this. First off, I was lucky enough, and Mr. Murray, of course, can attest to this too, to have you in class and have you as a young man here and watch you on the field. And now I, I consider it an honor to see you you right here, my man. It, it, it's, it, it, you've got to feel great. It's the best moment of your life to know where you are right now. You're coming back. Man, I can't tell you, you're not only just like one of my past, you're, you're, you're a friend and your family now because you're a Maroon. And thank you for taking the time to be here. One last thing before we get you out of here, big guy, and we'll give you a last word. I would love to get a number eight up here and get your autograph on it, throw up here in the Legend Series in the MSN broadcast booth, have you the very first one up here, brother, in our Hall of Fame. Jackson Mobley, we love you. Peace and out, number eight. Thank you all for having me. It was a lot of fun. We are back with the start of the third quarter, kickoff here in six seconds. Brandon, I don't know about you, but that was so much fun bringing back the legend Jackson Mobley. We've got to continue doing that. Was that not awesome? Absolutely. Having him back it was such a joy, and really, it just adds on to the awesomeness of tonight. Football started back. PC's got the lead. 
let's just hope we can keep this momentum up. Hey, 35-13, baby, what an awesome first half. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. This is going to be a big first series. We're going to see how mad Belfry is coming out of the locker room. Kickoff goes all the way to the 20-yard line. Number three for Belfry's got it, returning up the middle. Got a hold to the outside, breaks it up to the 40, pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Return of 25 yards by Dixon. First and 10, Belfry. He got bailed out there. He had a lot of real estate there in front of him. That could have been bad, so. Good move there and make sure we got him out of bounds and then try to uh, reset here on our defensive side of the ball. All right, here we go. Belfry's got the ball, and I'm sure they're going to keep pounding the rock at us. Let's see if we can keep knocking down number 20. I thought Dixon was 25. What number is Dixon? Number three. Number three is the running back that we're looking for. Looks like we have an injury on the sideline. Everybody's taking a knee. I sure hope that he is okay. The trainer's on the sideline. So well, let's just talk about some stats and first half play. I mean, what did you think about uh, the Maroons oh, there? Man. Definitely the first half was hot, but right now uh, this, is, this is all coaching right here, and it's such a mad sign of respect from PC where all the players, coach staff takes a sign. Uh, it looks like I'm not really sure a Belfry player that's down. It looks like it's Dixon, number three, the All-State. Running back on the sideline, wow. so that is a major, major catastrophe if this young man is hurt because yeah. he is one of the all-state candidates. Yeah. Let me just take a second here. We've had a lot of fun tonight, and I've made fun and gabbed at, at Dixon all day. But listen, when it comes down to it, nobody – it doesn't matter who on, on any side of the ball. We don't want to see anyone get hurt. So, cl clearly, this guy has the rest of his life in front of him. He is a Division One football player. Hopefully he's okay. He's on his feet here. Looks like he's up and walking gingerly, so that's good. No trainer, no stretcher. So, yes, prayers to Dixon. Let's hope he gets back in the game. We don't want to see anybody hurt. And uh, we have joked about his age, but he's an excellent running back, and uh, let's hope he returns. Mm. Looks like he's favoring his left leg, left foot. So, he's walking off the field. So, what a trooper. But, again, I mean, this is a guy was offered for West Virginia, supposed to be on their sidelines here in a few weeks, and opted to come back and play his senior year again. So, he's definitely a stud. I would have such a hard time turning down a Division One scholarship <laughs> to come back to high school for the fifth year. Yeah. But, you know, talking about COVID, what an unprecedented thing to think you'd get a fifth senior year out of some of these players. Looks like number 11's in the backfield. We're about ready to set up a play. Looks like it's first and 10 Belfry from their own 43-yard line. We've got a little bit of confusion here with the referees before we set the chains. Looks like we're about ready to start the play clock. And I don't see a running back in the backfield now that Dixon's out. Yes, I do. I see one in the I formation. Looks like number 11 has moved to running back. No, that's a quarterback. Straight up the middle and looks like we've got about a gain of three yards. And in on the tackle, what number do we have here? It's Leighton Abbott. He's all over the place. Looks like number six come in with a big tackle right there. So it looks like that was Christian Slavey coming in with the first hit. Christian Slavey with the hit. So now we are second and seven Belfry. Three yards on the play. Number 11 is calling up the play. So their quarterback is Caden Woolham. Mm -hmm. Woolham calls into play. Looks like we have, shoot, I don't know what number's in the backfield. Got laundry on the field in the backfield here. Two flags, two flags. I bet that was illegal motion. I bet that they, they were not set and they were running the play. Looks like that is it. Illegal shift cost them five yards. Mm. And we're going to move them back. And now it's going to be second and 12 instead of second and seven. Mm. Well, you know, if this is their game, then you like it if you're PC, if they're going to keep the ball on the, on the field and runs the clock out. But, you know, if you're Belfry, time's kind of ticking against your side. You're going to get something dialed up here. Oh, you know, speaking about that, this drive is huge for them because if they come away with no points and Pulaski scores again, I'm going to pretty much almost stick a fork all the way in this game. And I know that's saying it early, but the style of play, they can't come back like the Maroons can from being down 21. And they'll be down 29 if we can stop them and go again. Looks like we've got a handoff, number seven, far side. Mm. Three missed tackles up mm. the middle. We've got to tackle better. He dove in between the players. Looks like that's number seven, Zane Hatfield on the carry. Looks like he will make it probably third and two. 
Oh, sorry, that was third down. So now it's fourth down. They're barely inside the 49-yard line. But they're going to go for it. They're going to give us awesome field position right here if we make the stop. This, if we get the maroon curtain going right here, it's going to be big. Right here we go. This could be the play of the game for Belfry. Fumble right the snap, and he's down. We will take over. What a bad exchange. What a break for us. Big play, and that's big for the, the Pulaski County defensive line. Kudos to Coach Godby, Jason Roberts, and staff who's got these guys. They came out. They have been ready to play, and they are hungry. You know what? I don't know which one of the McCoy brothers got through there, but he got through to Mr. Hatfield, and he, he made a stop. So that was big. Uh, and, and you know what? On the offensive side, Polson tonight has looked really good, but that's to uh, all the credit of his offensive line. They have given him time to make decisions. Here we go. First and ten, Polston. Beautiful field position at midfield. He drops back. He's in the shotgun with no one in the backfield. So we've got four out wide, five out wide. Here we go. Drops it back, runs strong side, throws it. Number 15, Antonio Palmer. Catches it, turns it up the field, and he's going to take that little swing pass for five yards. Looks like we're going to have a second and five. Good catch for Palmer. Good run after the catch. Looks like Palmer's down on the sideline, too. So hopefully it's just cramping. Not really sure. I do not want to lose him with all that speed because that's definitely going to hurt us. I don't know I have to look at the death chart to look at our backup tight end, but, man, he's been playing good for these first two and a half quarters. When it comes to cramping, I've heard all kinds of Eastern Kentucky ideas for this, but I've heard a teaspoon of mustard, pickle juice. What do you do for cramping? What is that? Is it just weather-related, James? What do you think? Well, since I was never a premium – athlete like secretariat you know i've never have cramped in my life because you know my muscles just weren't that strong and fast twitched so i have no answer for that question plus i hate pickle juice too so there's no way that i would have a cure maybe we could dial up the teacher tailgate in the end zone there to take a i don't know coach hines a bottle of mustard right now here give it to your guys coach here we go we have second and four a long four handoff inside chandler gobby up the middle looks like he's going to carry it for possibly three yards actually chandler abbott sorry Donovan Abbott, I better get the names right. So, Donovan takes it and looks like we're going to have a third and one possibly. So, good inside carry by Donovan. Oh, my gosh, that's so close. Looks like that's probably a half of yard. So, once he hits the 40-yard line, we'll have the first down. So, it won't surprise me if he goes for a deep pass on third and one because he'll probably go for it on fourth down. He's kept us guessing, and he's really gambled all night. Nice uh, – uh, Definitely liberal play call. Inside handoff, looks like we've got Barrick, and he is stonewalled for a four-yard loss. So I really don't know about that inside handoff right there and us not, uh, you know, swinging it out, and please don't have him hurt. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. We've got an entry. He's cramping. So it looks like a cramp. His leg's up. A bad start to this third quarter for both teams here tonight. You definitely don't want injuries to creep in, uh, and anyone to get hurt, you want to win straight up. But, hey, this is a sport. Of injuries, and if anybody knows about injuries, it's the Pulaski County football team. I mean, over the years, uh, it's been game changing for some situations for us. It looks like this one here is definitely a cramp. The trainer, Katie's out there working on his foot, trying to exercise it out. So I'm almost 100% sure that we're going to be fine on this one. But pretty concerning on this hot night. We've already lost three players here in the last probably six plays of this game. Let's hope that the second half doesn't continue like this, and let's hope for the health and safety of all of our players. Absolutely. I may have to run down there and get some uh, bottles of mustard to give our guys here to make sure everything's good on the cramping side so we can uh, uh, finish up this third and fourth quarter and not be here tomorrow night still playing it. You know, speaking of mustard, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Hellman's Mayonnaise, for the best sandwich in America. Mm -hmm. Throw Hellman's on there, and you have a world-class sandwich. The law offices of T.J. Walker. Call T.J. He'll make them pay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Keep the sponsorships coming. Um, looks like we come back out here, and we're going to have a fourth and four. No surprise, Coach Hines is going for this. How many times is this now? This Four is times? The, this is the fourth time tonight, and it's worked in his favor so far, except for once. But One thing I can guarantee, this will not be a running play. I'm going to say Drew Poston passes this over the middle unless the middle opens and he takes off and scrambles on a busted play. Here we go, number 12 in motion. Hikes it, Drew Poston takes it, drops back, fakes it. Look, going deep. He is throwing it, and he's overthrown. Uh, that should have been picked off, and we've got another player hurt. Another guy down. That's a big hit right there, too. You know, I wish number 15 would have caught that. It would have hurt Drew Poston's stats, but 
he should have known knock it down, brother, because now they're going to get it at almost midfield. If he'd come out with an interception, they would have had it at the 10-yard line. So they gained about 35 yards by him dropping that interception. Yeah, let's just uh, let's just see our defense come out and continue to go. I see Palmer, uh, Antonio Palmer, on the sideline standing up. He's he, all all things appear to look good, so that's a good sign for us. All right, looks like it is first and ten. Belfry, they have it at the 44 yard line. So let's just hope we can stop them again. We've got 9:19 left in the third quarter with the score 35-13. The Maroons on top. Here we go, Belfry comes out, no surprise, traditional eye formation. Quarterback's got it under center, hands it out up the middle, and looks like he is going to be tackled by a bunch of people. Number 30, oh, fumble, fumble, the Roons may have this one. And PC has it, huge stop. Looks like number 30, Sanders Simpson was one of the men in there on the early tackle. Number 23 looks like he's recovered it. Aiden Wesley on the recovery. Wesley coming up big there. Aiden, he's been a guy that we've not talked about tonight, but definitely a guy that's been with this team over the years. He's grown, he's gotten stronger. Big play for Aiden Wesley. You know, Aiden's looked like he was a man ever since he come in as a freshman. So I can only imagine what he looks like now. Um, so now here we come out. Maroon's got it. First and 10 on Belfry's 45. Looks like we've got Drew Drew back in shotgun. He's going to take the snap. Handoff, fake handoff over the middle. Number 28 takes it. Big play up the middle. He's still on his feet, and it's going to take five Belfry players to bring him down. Nice throw from Polson, stepping up, delivering that ball in the middle of the pocket, in the middle of the field. Great look, great play by PC. Great catch, number 28, Harrison Denmeyer. Great catch, 13 yards, good juking, good footwork. Way to stay up, my man. Keep battling for that yardage. We've got first and 10, Pulaski County. Looks like we're at the 32-yard line of Belfry, and this is a huge drive, Foster, huge drive. Polson now looking good tonight. Polson drops back, surveys the all kinds of time. They have camped out in the backfield. And looks like we got a swing pass, but that was probably not going anywhere anyway. And Donovan Abbott drops the pass. So probably wouldn't win anywhere anywhere. So now we have a second and 10 from Belfry's 32 yard line. Can't say enough about everybody on both sides of the ball for the Maroons tonight. But Polson has uh, made some good decisions tonight. And, and kudos to the coaching staff. Look at look at the play calling tonight. They've dialed it up. Uh, nobody can be complaining at home tonight or in the stands about the play calling. These guys have really brought it. Here we go. Polson takes it inside handoff. Looks like Donovan Abbott breaks a tackle, gets up to the 30-yard line and gets tackled. So it looks like he got maybe three yard lines. So it looks like it's probably going to be third and seven. And Donnie, again, he's, uh, he does really good at running through contact and after contact. So, really good sign for Donnie. He's really good growth there with that young man. He looks like an athlete out there in uniform. Number 14 looks like a man out there. Drew Polston drops back, catches it, surveys the field, looking to his left, survey the middle, over the middle, wide open, beautiful catch. What a route. Number 16. Chandler Godby. Yeah, you called him up earlier. We got to we gotta get with that guy. Uh, Godby is you, you, you coming out party for Godby tonight. He looks like a legit receiver. He has got some good routes with his techniques, the hands out. He's catching the ball away from his body, and he looks legit crossing looks, the field. Looks like Wes Welker out there. He looks really good at catching the ball in the slot and moving to the middle of the field. Drew Polson drops back, first and 10, surveying, looking, looking, dancing, dancing, looking across, high pass, caught, what, Gobby again, what a catch, man, he went up over the Belfry player, brought that puppy home, and run it down to the two-yard line. Uh, Barrick, who, I mean, this guy is really starting to be a fan favorite tonight, and uh, man, if we got another guy that can make plays on this team, look out. It looked like he took the step ladder and just climbed up and said, this baby is mine when he took that one out of the air. So that's a big time catch. Pulaski is about ready to go ahead and make a statement to Belfry here in the third quarter. We have first and goal from the three yard line. And if Drew Poston drops back with that much time, he's gonna make you pay. That's why he is the, th the 5A district player of the year by Cat's Paws. Here we go. We've got, ooh, an eye formation back here in the backfield. No quarterback doesn't look like. Looks like we're going jumbo. Number 23 punches it up the middle and walks in. What a play call. 23 coming through right there. We have 
Aiden Wesley with the touchdown run. Hey, you know what? Reward the guy. He got us in the position with the fumble. You know what, Coach Hines says, you know what, big guy? Go ahead and run this in the end zone. You know what makes it even better? We've got Aiden's dad up here in the broadcast booth with us, and you've never seen a happier guy right here than watch his son recover fumble after fumble and punch that. He, I don't know if he got touched right there. He just – Get out of my way. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I mean, he ran that in. And, uh, yeah, shout out to Marty Wesley up here running the cameras here. Proud daddy. All right, we have got our PAT. Logan Corson sets up, and he's been perfect on the night. Everything's been dead center and long. I mean, he looks like a legit high school college kicker. One, again, baby, you don't get any better than that PAT just went through the upright. So you said he was from the soccer team? Wow, that's, uh, that's a really good get for us. Well, you can see why now. Johnny Hines likes finding those soccer players because he knows they have strong legs, brother, and it's paid off time and again because Derek Burgett was one of the best we had. We may bring him back one day for the Legend Series, but now we're up 40. That should be 42 to 13, yeah, shouldn't it? absolutely it should be. But let, let's get back to the kicker. I mean, you might as well call him the car wash because he's automatic, man, back there. What a nice boot he's got. Oh, uh, well, that's why. They just called a penalty, backed him up, and said, hey, it went hard enough. Let's do it again. So let's see, takes it down, and this baby is pure as fresh blown snow in Minnesota, baby. So now it's 42 to 13, and Pulaski is pouring it on tonight. We're going to start moving up the 5A rankings with a showing like this because Belfry is no cupcake like you mentioned. And you know what? If I'm Belfry fans, if my son's not riding home with me, I'm probably leaving right here in just a few minutes and getting a head start on the traffic. Absolutely. I mean, gosh, what a showing. I mean, you've got – Lexington WKYT here airing the game. You've got Maroon Sports Network. You've got our local Lake Cumberland media here. Everybody's watching in town. Pretty good show out for Belfry. And then you put up a showcase like this. Kudos. I mean, the big-time players make big-time plays. Our coaching staff walking around on the sideline like Ric Flair right now. They're pumped. They're jazzed. We're excited. Go Maroons. Man, I'm telling you what, this offense looks dynamic tonight. The defense – is stonewalling the rusher. Now, don't get me wrong. It hurt Belfry when Dixon went down. Absolutely. It did, because that's a big part of their attack. But the defense, besides a few busted tackles tonight, look like they've had an excellent game plan. They've come out prepared for this game. Just want to say a shout-out to our camera crews that's running this. The picture looks absolutely great. I just saw Allie LaForce walk in here uh, from Maroon Sports Network, as well as Blanco and everyone else. Shout-out. To them, Allie LaForce in full effect. She's giving me signs. She's excited. Happy to be here. You know what? She's she's our only lady on Maroon Sports Network, and I'm so happy she took this class. And uh, Allie Steele, thank you for running camera tonight. She's embarrassed by saying her name. we got to give a shout-out for all this different crew. I mean, it, from Jaggard Wells to Landon Stocks to, uh, you know, Michael Blanco to Mason Thompson to uh, – Ali Steele. I mean, I mean seriously, I don't think I would go to war with anyone. This, uh, forget ESPN crew staff. This crew right here has done an amazing job tonight. So, and Mr. Murray in this department and everyone that's making this dream literally come true. Fantastic job for everybody because literally uh, perseverance was key tonight, guys. Yeah, Mr. Lucas Reynolds as well. We can't forget about him over here running the ATM box and helping out on everything that we have tonight. So, currently the score is 42 to 13. Seven minutes and three seconds left on the play clock. We're getting ready to start Belfry's drive, and it is now urgent time. They are all panic mode. We've got to make it happen now. If we don't make it happen now, we know this game's over. So they are in dire straits. But I'm telling you what, these seniors tonight have come out, and they have performed like it's the very last time they'll ever play the game of football. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, that's what it's all about. I mean, it really – with so much stuff going on and the distractions that's going on throughout the week, these guys are not robots. They're not machines. To get everybody on the same page, focused and zoned in, that is coaching. And that's they're making it look easy tonight. But let me just reinforce, this is really hard what they're doing because literally both teams are going to know who they are after this game's over because uh, so many teams want to schedule a cupcake, and kudos to our coaching staff for avoiding that. They're saying, you know what? We want the best. Bring it out. Let's see where we are. You know, I'm so excited now to see what the rest of this season is going to bring. First and 10, Belfry. They have it at the 35-yard line. No surprise. Inside handoff, number eight. He has stopped immediately. Number eight for Belfry. Gets about three yards on the carry. 
And it looks like that was Neil Copley with the carry. Christian Slavely on the tackle. Looks like they got a possible two yards, and it will be second and eight. Belfry. Lining up, surveying the field, and we can almost guarantee it'll be a run again. So number three looks like he's calling out the plays. Number three is Isaac Dixon back in the game. Mm, so wow. nice for them. That's a good sign. Must have been cramping of some sort. Oh, nice run here. Number seven looks like he is pretty electric. If you'll remember earlier when he busted about that 40-yard touchdown run for their second touchdown, I would be handing number seven the rock a whole bunch more. Now we got two players down. Man, I, I'm telling you why. This, this is making me sick seeing how many injuries we're having tonight. See if we can identify the players down. Everybody should be taking a number seven, the running back for them. So Zane Hatfield is down. And for oh, wow. us, Oh, man, and Leighton Abbott has been all over the field tonight, too. So, uh, let's just hope this is okay. Hatfield's been a nice compliment to Dixon tonight. Nice running back for Belfry. Yes, number seven's been, been for real, man. He's made some good cuts, and, and, and he can play some football. He's, he, he knows where the running lanes are, and he's making some excellent jukes tonight. So, number seven, hats off to you, Zane Hatfield. Let's hope you get back up. And uh, our Pulaski brother, let's hope that everything's okay with you as well. Both of them are still down, so it looks like they're about ready to get back up. And both wow. of them looks like they're ready to walk off. Good Gosh, deal. good. And you know what? No rest for the weary because <laughs> you, no time for you to get your feet on the ground. You're coming out with two heavy-hitting teams tonight and getting the breath and your wind knocked out of you. You're playing with the big boys when you're playing competition with Pulaski or Belfry. So glad to see he's walking off the field for both guys, both teams. It's good. Okay, good thing. Leighton Abbott's off the field now. Looks like he's going to be okay. I say he will come back in the field here in just a second. Injury timeout. Looks like we're ready to go. Belfry is now at the Pulaski County 49-yard line. It is first and 10. They're going to line up, and looks like we have got Isaac Dixon as the quarterback. So that's pretty weird for number three to be the quarterback. He hands it off inside tackle, and looks like they get about four yards straight up the middle, and I didn't get to see the player. It looked like Neil Copley up the middle. Again, if they're going to keep the ball on the ground, it plays in PC's side as far as the clock time goes, but still, nonetheless. Second and seven, a little over six minutes left on the game clock, left in the third quarter. Pulaski comfortably ahead, 42-13. to 13. Belfry's about ready to take the ball, second and seven at Pulaski's 46-yard line. You know, if you're Belfry, you've got, you've got to start making some plays. You're going to have to drop back and try to make something happen if you want to have a chance to stay in or win this game. Inside handoff, looks straight ahead to Copley. Looks like he's going to get about six yards, but once again, that clock is running. The clock is PC's friend, like Forster has said. Looks like we're going to have a third and one, possibly, from the 40-yard line. Looks like they spotted it just short. They put it at the 41-yard line, so it looks like it's going to be third down and two rather than third down and one. And, Forster, I'm going to predict run up the middle. <laughs> Yeah, no surprise, really. I mean, gosh, it's really boring football to watch. But nonetheless, these guys are coached. They're very disciplined, and they stay to the game plan, and they do what they do really well. Oh, they bumped into each other. That could be a mistake. No, number three breaks a tackle. Dixon's to the outside. That should have been a tackle for loss. Uh, they bumped into each other, a little miscommunication. But then he takes that, and he turns it into roughly a 22-23 yard gain. Those are mental breakdowns that the coaching staff's going to watch on uh, film, and it just drives them crazy because, again, you have guys in position to make a play, and you got to make plays there, and it just didn't happen. And you know what? It costs PC right there. We really have got to get somebody out on the edge. We've got to have somebody con to contain to make him cut back because what he's doing, he is juking our inside guy, and he's putting that foot and going to the outside, and he's got so much speed. When he turns it on, he's going to get the corner almost every time. So we've got to have somebody run to that corner and make him cut it back. Yeah, you're exactly right, man. It's like he hits another gear. It's unbelievable the other gear that he, he goes into, the feet and the, and the stre uh, feet and strength that he has right there, speed. Uh, but anyway, uh, we got a pause in action right here. It looks like a player down for Belfry now. Dixon is down again. Maybe it's a reoccurring uh, cramping going on here, but nonetheless, both teams playing through it in a very just dismal third quarter here, really. 
I don't know how many injuries we've had. We're probably up to about six. They're standing him up, so that's a good sign. We don't have any major injury, I don't believe, so they're welcoming him back to his feet, so that's good for him and Belfry's side. So let's hope that he returns to action once again without injury the next time. When we return, it's going to be first and 10 from the 22 from Belfry, and uh, we're going to expect that they're still going to punch it, punch it, punch it. Let's just hope that we make some tackles and make this clock churn, and, and let's hope that we can make this be another five or six plays before they get in the end zone because you've been talking about this clock being your friend. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're a running team and you are down 29 yeah. points late in the third quarter, you're fighting an uphill battle. You're, yeah. you're pushing a Mack truck uphill by yourself yeah. and without any friends and assistance, and gravity is no one's friend. Great analogy, and tonight the Ferrari has been PC, and the antique truck, Belfry. Looks like we had a, a little fake action there, and Hatfield ended up taking the handoff, went to the inside, and he gets tackled. And I like that because he tried to cut it back up the middle instead of getting it to the outside with his speed. So it looks like we tackled him for a no gain, so it looks like it's going to be second and ten, and that is awesome for us. Keep running, clock. Defense has been on the field for a while, so let's just uh, see if we can maintain and uh, hopefully get everybody back and fresh for another week because they're definitely going to be sore after this game. We need to start calling out some of these defensive players, man, because they have been playing great tonight. Absolutely. So when you spot out a big tackle there, look her right up the middle. I need to identify him, hand up at the middle about two yards and stopped. So let's see who's first one up there making it. looks like Aiden Wesley, number 23, Aiden pops Wesley right up. Some plays, making it happen. You would never know it was him making the tackle. He helps us by raising his arms and say, look, it was me, coach. So I like that. So maybe he knew we were having trouble knowing who was making the tackle. So thank you, Aiden. PC players, let us know who made the tackle. We'll try to give you a shout out up in the booth. Looks like we have third and nine. This is going to be big right here if we can go ahead and, and get them to a short yardage situation. They just changed it to third and eight from the 20-yard line. Uh, here we go. Maroon curtain, baby. Let's make a play. Hand off straight up the middle, fake. Mm. Halfback toss in the backfield. Oh my gosh, what a hit. Big fumble right there. That looks like Brady Kane and number 33 coming through, which would oh, be Trey Hornsby. Trey Hornsby and Brady Kane coming up and making a pop. That was a big time play, <laughs> a big time hit. One that, you know, definitely has to be acknowledged. Definitely Sports Center uh, worthy right there. Man, isn't that so much more exciting, seeing a big pop like that and seeing that come out live right here on the broadcast? I'm telling you, that was a hit. Yes. <laughs> I mean, gosh, that, again, is a surreal moment that takes us back in. Guess, guys, football is back. Football is back. We're still excited to be here. It is so awesome to have Maroon Sports Network. It's so awesome to set up here with a colleague calling out the game. So awesome to see students run this entire program. I'm beyond excited. We're on fourth and 10 from the 22-yard line. Let's make a stop here. Handoff number seven sweeps to the left. Oh, tackled in the backfield. That looks like number six, baby, coming in. Christian Slavy with a huge tackle in the backfield. First and 10, Maroons. Well, here we go. We're going to take over pretty, you know, starting field position here. See what we can do with some time and with some clock. Really, I don't really see them pumping the brakes any. Coach Hines wants to send a message. He wants to send it loud and clear. You know, with our injury luck, I'm probably going to get through the third quarter, maybe a little bit of the fourth, and I'm going to start looking at resting some of these starters because we've got a hard schedule. You've already mentioned that. This schedule is loaded this season because nobody wants to play us. So we've got to go play the best of the best. So let's get back to the game. First and 10, backfield, Poston takes it, offset eye, takes it, hands it off. Looks like that may be Abbott coming up the middle, number 14. And it looks like it takes four or five Belfry players to take him down. He is running hard. Looks like he got four or five yards. Nice play to start it out, keep it on the ground, because uh, sometimes, you know, we, we do have a really good running back here in, in Abbott. Uh, so it's good that Coach Hines is going to try to keep their defense on us, keep the ball on the field, and see what we can do in short field uh, positions. Well, you know, he's an intelligent coach. He's going to know, hey, I'll just run the clock too. So let's try to get out of this game. So Drew Poston's back, second and six, drops back, surveys the field, looking there over the middle, number 12 catches that. it. Nice Cuts back up play. through here, and that looks like Bryson Duggar, sharp-dressed man, making another play. 
He, uh, I love how he was coached right there. He, he, co- he was coached to come back to the ball, downhill run, nice move in between the tackles there. I love the guys tonight and the plays that they make after the catch. And, man, it looks like I spoke too soon. It's holding on Pulaski County. And we have another Belfry player down again. Looks like number 11 is cramping on the sideline, and these penalty flags are absolutely killing us. I hate it wiped away the catch from Duggar because, like you said, he came back to the ball, kept his eyes on it, caught it, then surveyed the field, made a cut, and cut it upfield. Uh, so, man, the future is bright. These wide receivers and tight ends are looking really amazing is. tonight. It really is. The fact that the play that they make after the catch – that's the big thing, the, the positive plays and yards after the catch. So often you don't see that. You see a catch, you see a down. I'm so happy and, and excited to see that out of this team of young men here. Looks like we have after the penalty, they gave us the yardage, then they cut off the penalty flag. Looks like we have second and 16. The ball is placed on our 14 yard line. So one thing we don't need is a huge turnover. We just need to manage the clock, 2.08 left in the third. Let's get out of this third quarter and take it down the home stretch. Poston's back in the backfield. Waits the snap, gives the signal, hands it off to Abbott. Mm. Abbott cuts up the middle. Nice run. And good run. And looks like he's going to pick up about seven yards or so. And we'll look, and it's probably going to be about third down and 11, looks like. third, and 11. third and 11. So it looks like he got six yards exactly on the carry. So third and 11. Drops back, Poston looks, surveys the field, throws it deep. Number 12, Duggar. Oh, Duggar, you have got to reel that one in, my man. You started running. We just bragged on you. You started running before you saw it in. That's exactly right, and he knows that. He was trying to make the play before he caught the ball. But, man, uh, kudos to their secondary. They jumped up to make the play, kind of took his vision away from the ball just for a second. Uh, but PC now in a situation where we're going to, looks like, punt the ball. We didn't run a whole lot of time off the clock, but you know, our big Achilles heel at time was the penalty flag. Uh, I don't know how many yards we have for penalties tonight, but I will say it's probably approaching 75 to 80 yards if I was guessing. I've not written everything down tonight. Like you said, we're not the stat guys. We are ju ju just the uh, the commentators tell you exactly what's happened on the field. Oh my high punt, almost went over his head. And it, oh my gosh, that was almost blocked. I mean, that was within probably two or three yes. inches of being blocked. Yeah. Good recovery. Our Good. punter was, who is that, number 33, Trey Hornsby. Took that out, and he turned nothing into something. He actually got the ball from about the 10-yard line up to the 48-yard line, and that was quick thinking to avoid the defender. Great presence of mind to make that happen because that could have been bad. And it could have gave, I don't know, a little bit of breath of light in for Belfry to give them a chance, and we don't want that to get out of the fourth. All right, looks like Belfry is about ready to take over again. A minute and 29 seconds on the clock, 42 to 13. Belfry is definitely in panic mode, but you know, to give the crowd credit, I don't think a single fan has left from that sideline that we've looked at all game. No, uh, wow. I mean, because it is, uh, to, to go to Belfry, you got to want to get there, and their crowd that they brought here tonight, it's going to be a long drive back on that parkway. Buckle in and get there. Here we go. Looks like we're going to have number seven under center for Belfry. And they're going to take a timeout. So, looks like we get to recover here. But number seven under center is going to be Zane Hatfield, who's run some really good plays today. And we just got some excellent news, guys. I'm going to bring this up to you. Sure. This is so awesome that Jelena Edwards, our former youth service center, you are not going to believe this. Yeah, I know Jelena. She just texted me. And Jelena, we love you. Jelena said, we are watching you from Anchorage, Alaska. This is awesome. Wow. Anchorage, Alaska. Man, must be some good uh, trout fishing up in Alaska. But uh, Jelena, go catch us a trout. And, uh, wow, that's uh, awesome that you're listening Listening in a, well, uh, just a beautiful place. So, uh, thank you. We, yes, Jelena, we miss you. You, um, you rock. You're awesome. And uh, we're speaking of legends tonight. We can't I mention what, that up without Jelena. I'll tell you when Jelena. we're going to miss Jelena. We're going to miss Jelena at project graduation time because that lady went out and got everything we ever needed. You Fishing pole, you got it. Makeup kit, you got it. Refrigerator, you got it. So, Jelena, we miss you. We're going back to action. 
Here we go. We've got first and 10 Belfry from the 48-yard line. Surprise. Handoff straight up the middle, and he gets popped. Number nine goes nowhere. Stonewall right. Jackson, baby, gets a yard, falls forward. Good thing he's tall, or he wouldn't have got that yard. Excellent. Excellent stop right there by the defense, and we're going to make sure we try to get out of this third quarter with a minute and 13 hey, listen left. listen how funny this is. You just mentioned Trout. She just texted me to let me know she's listening to the broadcast. She said, love you guys. It's actually salmon. Salmon. Okay. Yes. All right. We love grilled salmon. That's good, but you probably don't want to cook that. That's definitely trophy fish if you're in Alaska. Oh, man, that would be good being fresh like that. Salmon is a good fish. Okay, hand off straight up the middle. Oh, fumble right up the middle, and it looks like Hatfield might have recovered it, but that could have been huge. Looks like a loss of two, and we're going to have third and ten. So, you know, Belfry has put the pigskin on the ground all night long, and we have been eating on these turnovers. And you know what? Maybe that's a testament to our defense. These guys are hungry. They're 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 getting down. They're getting low. They're making the hits, and really, that's 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 a good that's a good sign for the first game of the season. <laughs> I gotta get a shout out now. We gotta keep her phone out of here. You know, Sheila Elmore. She does everything in our building because she's an excellent back. You know, building assessment coordinator. If you don't know what that term means, but she said, "Uh, Luke and I." You need to give us a shout out because we're listening all the way from Twin Lakes. All the way from yeah. Twin Lakes. Listen, Lakes. big time players make big time plays. Sheila Elmore continues to make big time plays. We can't do what we do without Sheila. So, Sheila, thank you. I am firmly convinced that that lady cannot retire until James Murray retires. <laughs> so, what have we got to do? We've got to keep her in the building because I'm telling you, she does an amazing job with all the scheduling restrictions going from trimesters to semesters, and she makes it all work. She is a I bet she could do one of those puzzles that's four to eight years within two months. There's no doubt in my mind. Hey, it's football, but let's channel our inner Dickie V. She's a PTP -er, baby. <laughs> Prime time player. Yes, yes. And you know, we'll give a shout out to Luke Elmore, too. You know, Luke is tall, dark, well, tall, light, and handsome. So, uh, you know, we're about to bring him back in the fantasy football league. So we'll see what Luke Elmore's got for the season. So let's run back here. We've got third and nine. The clock's running, 44 seconds until the end of the third quarter. And we may get another playoff, maybe two plays, before this third quarter comes to a halt. Looks like they're going all in shotgun here, which they haven't done all night long. Have we got number five or number seven? Seven takes it. Hatfield rolls his left. Oh, they're throwing. And, ooh, right through his hands. Mr. Butterfingers, 14, you better uh, get some stick em on those hands because that was there. <laughs> Channeling your inner, inner Madden days, man. I'm, I'm impressed. That's awesome. Not many people would get that reference. Definitely not. Definitely not, Forster. We're having such a good time tonight, and we're so thankful once again for all these students running MSN. Uh, thankful for we've already gave a shout-out to Mr. Mackinich and Mr. Braun and Dave Pearson and our tech guys for getting us up and running. A little glitch early on, but, man, we're rocking now. Listen, it's this is not trite. Listen, to say that I can come up here and color commentate anything is absurd. Okay, I recognize that. I'm, I'm just up here having a good time, just having a conversation. Nobody's listening, having fun. So I'm, we're living the dream. So thank, literally, thank everyone for, for making something like this happen. Here we go. Fourth and nine. Oh, almost blocked the punt. Shanked it. It's not going very far. Bounces to 40. Rolls down to the 20. Seven yard line goes out of bound. It will be first and 10 Maroons from the 27 yard line. 18.4 seconds left, and this game is firmly in control. If you and I weren't color commentating, I might be starting my car up right now and heading to the house. Absolutely, and and I got it. I got to say this: it, this doesn't mean it. Coach Hines and Phil Russell were really close <laughs> to each other. Right there, conversation they were having nose to nose. It's wonderful. I, I, sometimes I wish I could be not a fly well, in the wall. You know, listen. If you're within six foot of Phil Russell, you're nose to nose. So I just want to say that. <laughs> Coach Hines in his hat and cotton polo. Love it. He's like, he's not doing dry fit, folks. He's cotton. He, he looks so good once again. I mean, to, to look that good and, 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 you know, he looks like he's 30 years old. He looks like he's Jack Bunyan out there. I mean, he looks like he could pick up an ox. Drew Poston drops back, surveys the field, throws it in number 12, catch, and looks like it's going to be about a five-yard catch to Bryson Duggar. Bryson Duggar, nice play. Way to bounce back after uh, the last uh, uh, advantage when we had the ball. So, And that will run out the third quarter, MSN Network. We're setting on a 42-13 to 13 lead, and this is going better. If you told me tonight, James Murray, you and Forster are going to call this game. At the end of the third quarter, it's going to be 42-13. to 13. Belfry's going to be on their heels. PC is going to have the ball. I'm going to say, oh, my God, watch I had to stop. Oh, Look yeah. at this light this, show. This is amazing. Uh, it's, well, 
I mean, could it be considered obnoxious <laughs> that we have such a nice light show? Really? You, you know what? I love getting these text messages in. We're just going to keep doing this. I'm giving shout-outs. My shout man, outs. Mike Morgan, who used to help build this program because he was a heck of a coach and a heck of a teacher. He took another job and left the Maroon family, but it will always be in his heart. And uh, he just sent to us, watching your feed, it's great to see this. You and Foister are the dream team, brother. Can you get a bigger wow. compliment than the dream wow. team? No, I literally, anything from Mike Morgan, man, I'll take. Thank you, Mike. Mike Morgan, you want to talk about another legend here. He was a part of these successful teams and coaching staff and the success to the high school. So, Mike Morgan, thank you. Um, Mike, I hope you're feeling better. I know you went through a few things. Just know that we're, you're always part of us with the Maroon family. Phil Collins was playing a song to you right then, In the Air Tonight, brother, and that was to Mike Morgan. All right, so we're getting ready for the fourth quarter. That light show was amazing. I would come here and watch a concert and pay premium money for that light show. I would probably come and pay money just for the light show. Well, amongst the light show and the excitement, there's equipment falling around us right now, folks. So I mean, we got we got we got we got nice lights, we got nice equipment for this, but we have. Oh my gosh, we got some real. Uh oh, estate. breaks up the middle. Antonio Palmer, dude, he has got jets. That kid is amazing. He stops and he pulls a Deshaun Jackson, throws up the number one at the ten yard line, and slows down just so they can get within eye shot of him. And I I still want to go back. Antonio, two years ago, if you would have told me this would have happened, I would have said you'd have lost your mind. This guy has done a 180. Uh, really, really, I'm proud of this guy. Fantastic run. Two big plays tonight for Antonio. But anyway, I'm going to get back. We got equipment falling down up here. We got nice lights. We've got uh, nice equipment we're running things on. But we don't have countertops. James, what's going on? We don't have countertops. Things are falling in our lap right now as we're talking. Seriously. Hey, when Coach Miller hears this broadcast, we're going to have a state-of-the-art booth after this was over with. You know you know our latest comment here, Foister? Our principal said, you guys sound great. Now, does it get any better than that when your administration comments on you? Uh, wow. You know, well, listen, uh, he, he he's out front every single day. So, uh, you know, we, 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 we pack up our, uh, our, our equipment and we – we go to war for him any day and every day, so uh, it all goes with good leadership. So thank you, Mr. McInich, on that wonderful compliment. But anyway, yeah. You know, no one's speaking about that, Forster. We have got the best administrators, guidance counselors, support staff, cafeteria, kids, custodians, the whole nine yards. We've got it going on right now in 2021 at PC. Absolutely. Uh, amongst everything that's going on, everyone can get lost in all the things that's going on around them. But uh, I challenge you to find a better staff and a better school than what we got here. Of course, I'm biased. Uh, you know, literally, my high school doesn't exist anymore. So the fact that I can be working here and feel like that I've been made to, that I'm, I'm a part of this family, I'm extremely honored. So right now, uh, if, if you cut me open, I spill and I bleed maroon and white. And, and, and that's all a testament to the, the colleagues and, and the culture that we got here. So proud to be a part of it. Well spoken, my friend. Well spoken. Looks like we're about ready to kick the PAT at the start of the fourth quarter. Line up, and you know Logan, bad snap. And that one struggled, and it was because of the snap, because he had to stop mid-kick, line it up again, and it went wide left. So that was not Logan's fault on that missed PAT. Absolutely. I mean, he definitely is Otto McIntosh. Uh, we're, man, you talk about a lost art in kicking, especially in high school. Um, so that's really, really good that we have him and we have a year of growth with him. So here we are. we got some stoppage in play, 11-48 in the fourth quarter, 48-13. to 13, But I do want to get back to just, just <laughs> how absurd this is. We have an awesome light show. We're in works of trying to upgrade our field. We have Maroon Sports Network, but we don't have countertops, listeners, to put our things on. Seriously, the countertop is falling, and I'm having to balance and holding it up. The entire time while I talk, this is unbelievable to me. What is going on? This place is, is its really interesting. Listen, after we paid $1.2 million for this light and sound system, wow. we can't complain about, and I made the number up, but we cannot <laughs> complain about these countertops, brother, because yeah. what we're seeing out there on the field with the performance, let's get back to action right here because we can go on and on. That's true. 
Okay, we'll kick it off. It looks like it's going down to about the 20-yard line. Mm. Drop by Belfry. Picked up, recovered, and he got mm. to a knee. So it was dead immediately when he got to a knee. So it's going to be first and 10 Belfry from their own 22-yard line. Looks like we have 11.45 left on the clock. If anybody else is out there watching, give me and Forrester a shout-out. We may put you on the air tonight. Yeah, we may have to start and, like, upgrade this to a call-in show as well, like a post-game show where we can get 504-12180. Call in and give us your thoughts on okay, we, plastic. We, we've got the latest. We've got the Science Hill superintendent's wife, Judith Diehouse. Oh. Judith just says, you guys are cracking me up. I love it, and I love the light show. You all are awesome. We can start a GoFundMe page for your booth. Oh, wow. Well, you know what? Some countertops. And, you know, we got Compton's right across the road at 39. We can go talk to Compton. Maybe that would be what we, we do next. I don't know. I'm going to put Judith in charge of my GoFundMe page because, you know, she's much better looking than I am, so I'm going to put Judith on that. She part. sounds like a lovely lady. All right, here we go. First and 10, Belfry. They've got it. Oh, we've got whistles, man. Just when we're ready to start the action, it dies. So, delay of game. So, that's good. Five-yard penalty on Belfry. Belfry, get your act together, man, because you can't give up free yardage to the maroon curtain, baby. What's the what, – what's your take? Is it Are we close to high school sports having instant replay involved or challenges from the coaches to where we can make the games even longer? I don't know. Oh, my God, what an excellent idea. I would love to be in this booth longer with you. <laughs> All right, so we've got first and 10 from the 20. Well, actually it says 23, but that looks much like the 17, 18-yard line to me. Back it up, and Belfry's going to have to start passing. But, no, they run it, number 22 up the middle, and he is met right up the middle, and he is just stonewalled. Looks like it's big number 57. So we've got to look up and give a little shout out to number 57. It's hard with lights in here, Forster. We're going to have to get us some lights. Maybe we need some day. lights in the booth. We got the lights on the field. I'm no giving, lights in the I'm booth. giving credit to Jay Bells on that hit right there, baby. So let's give a little shout out to number 57, Jay Bells, coming up the middle. So no yards on that carry. Stonewalled second and 10. Clock's running, 11-15 left. Score is 48-13 Pulaski. 35-point lead, five touchdowns. They're not coming back from this. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness. I love it. Second and 10, and guess what? Another yellow flag. This is so much fun. I think they like, I think they like to just throw the flag, say, hey, look at me. Give me a shout-out. Lots of laundry on the field tonight. Very, very dirty, dirty. Okay, so that was actually a false start on Belfry. So, I, hey, keep backing them up. Bring them back. So, now they've got them at second and 20. Second and 20. So, you know what? This team, this Pulaski team, unfinished is their motto. Did you know that? Unfinished. unfinished. I, like, I like it. I like it. So, we look like that we're going to, you know, we took a 20-point beating last year by Belfry. Right now we're up 35, and we may win by 40-something. We are sending a message. Now, again, facts are optional, but I think I'm pretty sure we've not beat Belfry. So that's this is even more of a big-time win. Hey, guess what? I thought it was another flag, but it's timeout Belfry because they're like, hey, we don't want three straight penalties, so let's just, <laughs> let's just live with two. Let's go ahead and run to the sideline. And, uh, you know, I'd love to have another text here and get me and Forster rolling, see if we can another call out. But, uh, you know, thank you to Jelena from Alaska. Um, Sheila from Twin Lakes, Mike Morgan from Parts Unknown, and Judas Diehouse from Saint Seal, wherever she lives at, beside the school, I'm sure, because her husband's got to work there so much. Uh, so thank you, guys. Looks like Forrester may have one here. Yeah, know. we also want to give a, uh, another shout out to you know tonight has been Senior Night here at Pulaski County Field, and a big longtime sponsor to Pulaski County football has been Mac Metal, their longtime supporter. So Mac Metal. And TJ Law Office, if you want to, to get paid, call TJ. He'll make them pay. Yeah, I like that. Call TJ, baby. So, yes, thank you for that sponsorship. We, we very much appreciate it. Big fans. And, and man, I tell you what, after looking at this team, I'd want to be a sponsor of this team too because Johnny Hines has got this program looking good. If anybody, I, I love it. I love it when a coach has got swag. And it, I, I go to Calipari for this. Calipari, when he knew he was going to play Patino, he had that extra swagger about him when he knew it was on. Coach Hines has got that swagger about him. And, you know, the world has been against him. He took a lot of lumps, uh, and he's back, and he's ready to send a message to everyone in the district. 
Jelena, thank you for that picture of you and that big salmon. I am very impressed in Alaska. So she is telling us the real deal. It's cracking me up, though, seeing her in waders. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Straight up the middle, Belfry runs it, and looks like they get maybe four yards, five yards. Looks like it's going to be about third in a mile. We'll say 15. Um, so this game is looking like it is – couldn't be any better for us, quite honestly. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're a tropical paradise, send us your pictures of your vacation spots and we'll give you a shout out. You know, our viewers are picking up. We're going to approach 100 here soon. We're going, we're going to bust this thing wide open. Is it Twitter, so, Facebook? Uh, we've got it on maroons.net. And if you go there, you will see a link under Maroon Sports Network, and it's a YouTube subscriber. So we would love to have a lot more of you subscribe. So, yeah, comment on YouTube. Here we go, backfield. And guess what? Another penalty flag. I cannot believe that once again. False start. Belfry might as well get on the bus because they have quit playing. Yeah, 48 to 13, nine minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, they're just probably going to hold it in and wait till next week. You know, I'm probably going over there and I'm going to say, hey, you, freshman, weighs 105 pounds. Come here. You're my new running back. I'm going to try you out. I'm just going to give you, you a, a preview because I know you're going to be with me. PC's made this look easy tonight, but by no mistake at all has this been easy all week long and really all summer long. And if you go back to last spring, these guys are dialed in, and that's all for the leadership and coaching staff. Here we go, handoff, and number 11 is just tackled in the backfield. Looks like number 43 gets in there and busts that play up. Looks like Drew and Abnett tackles him for a loss, and we're going to have fourth down and 422 yards. Godby is really angry on the sidelines. Now he's high-fiving, but he was really hot about some things. But uh, I, I love our coaching staff, and, and – <laughs> <laughs> Sideline attire is interesting. I, I got a comment you on know, it. You know, though, it looks like it's so much easier to pick out Coach Hines with that white hat versus Stephen Godby with the black hat. Do you think they play good guy, bad guy on the sideline? Yeah, I think it, uh, definitely it's a good cop, bad cop situation, or sometimes it might just be bad cop, bad cop. Okay, punt it out of the end zone, and it is blocked in the end zone. Looks like a touchdown, Pulaski County. Looks like it is recovered by number 55. Looks mm. like. Who is Big 55? Dylan Elliott? Dylan Elliott. Is that Little Brian? Little Brian Elliott. Wow. Wow. Brian Elliott has never been little. Uh, so we cannot say little Dylan Elliott because that guy, I still owe him playing cards. You know what? Because Brian Elliott busted me out one night. So I've not forgotten that man, and I'm coming after him. He left your science department, so he's fair game now. Let me tell you something. Brian Elliott is a sandbagger, okay? Now, I played Rook with him. That man will not bet, and he will take you to the house every time. He's, he's a mean card player, but, you know, I put him up against uh, the Robert Bullocks and the James Murrays of the world. You know what we can do? We can give a big shout-out here and say, Go Wolverines. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Wow. Oh, my. OSU, what's a Buckeye anyway? I mean, a poisonous fruit anyway. Here we go, the kick. The PAT is good. And we are 55 to 13. Wow. You talk about taking a team behind the woodshed and just saying, I'm laying the lumber to you. PC has brought it tonight. And I'm wow. 42 points in the fourth. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and no sign of letting up either. That's, uh, that's impressive. All right, we've got a uh, stop in action here. Eight minutes and 40 seconds left of the fourth quarter and another uh, extension to our light show at Pulaski County Field. Uh, seems to be the uh, talk of the town here. And you can definitely notice uh, something's in the air here. Should be a gray shirt somewhere over here 55-13. We got a little ACDC, brother. If you want to bring ACDC, I'm up for it all day long. So you talk about getting me pumped up. Let's play a little ACDC with this light show. ACDC, nice selection here. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say a little unpopular thing. I, I, ACDC, I, I, I enjoyed, I respect, but not one of my favorites when it comes to the 90s and the 80s rock. Bro, you're dead to me. You're dead. We were close. You're dead to me. <laughs> okay. Pulaski is about ready to kick it off. 40-yard line, hand signals up, getting everybody lined up for the kick. We've got to get all of our punters down. Looks like that is number 22 with the kickoff. Kicks it deep. So a punter is Ethan Edelwine. Mm, Dropped by number 11 for Belfry. Returned for about 9, 10 yards. Tackled at right around the 31-yard line. So here we are. Just make sure you get your guys into next week. 
probably avoid some injuries if you can. You get this game under wraps. You can start out 1-0, and and you got a lot of talking that you can do because you've earned it. Beating the number one high school team ranked in 3A uh, high school football, that's, uh, that's quite an opening matchup. You know, I'm taking Drew Polston out. He's been injured the last two years. Uh, but right now, you know, we're on defense. So let's see what happens when we come back on offense. So I would start playing some of my backup defenders as well, too, because now the score doesn't really matter at this point. Hand up up the middle, and he is met. Number 43 come and just laid the wood right there. So Drew and Abnett, great hit, my man. Looks like a no gain. No, we're going to give them. I'm going to give them roughly two yards. So we've got second and eight. Second and eight, Belfry. 7.34 on the play clock. 55-13 is the score. Pulaski up 42 points in the fourth quarter. Oh, yeah. That helps out. Over here. Yeah, it's big time. It makes a world of difference. All right. Belfry lined up here to take the snap. Here we go. Inside handoff, penalty flags, whistles, no surprise. What's happening here? Fumble and a knee. They rolled him down since he picked it up. So it looks like he lost three yards. And looks like it's going to be about third and nine here. Third and nine. They have a, had a amazingly bad time dropping that football today. Did we put some sort of Crisco on that ball, or what did we do on, I'm on, telling the, on you, that side of it? To put the ball down on the on on the field as much as they have tonight, it, it's probably it, it's probably a surprise to the Belfry staff as well. If I'm their coach, they go back to school and every one of them packs a football all week long, and I dare them to lay it down. Okay, so we run to the left, and looks like he's tackled right around the first down marker. So they knock down the chains. I'm unsure how much yardage he got. The gang tackled on the sideline. Looks like that was Dylan on the carry, and looks like it's going to be fourth and four, maybe. What a luxury that we have Drew Polston again. I mean, he he's able to play action. He's able to move out of the pocket. He's able to run on his feet. He's able to make the pass. And Belfry just, they're not blessed in that same situation here. Man, I'm telling you what, if this team stays healthy, we're going to be dangerous this year. It's going to be amazing watching them. I cannot wait for this season to unfold. Bring on all the rivalries. And you know what, Somerset, let's let's play you two. We'll play you in a cornfield tomorrow night. Come on, bring it on. Third and three, running back to the right-hand side, tackled up high, and it looks like he might have got a yard. That looks like it's going to be fourth and two. Looks like Big 88 gets in on the tackle, so let's give a shout-out to – Spencer Allen, great tackle, Spencer. Spencer Allen bringing the bringing the energy there on that hit. Looked like he's a little up high. He almost got up too high. That was almost a good old-fashioned hog tackle. You know, you got him up high by the neck and brought him down. No flag. I'm happy. Brought him to the ground. So good job, Spencer. Keep it up. So let's get ready to roll. The legendary Matty Ice just walks out of the booth. We'll get him in here sometime for the Legend Series, maybe. So now we're ready for fourth and three. Five oh seven on the clock. It's ticking. Uh, I don't know why Belfry's going for it. Maybe try to get some confidence or something or another, but I'm throwing up the white flag. I'm punting this baby, and I'm going to get on that bus as soon as I can, and I'm going to hightail my team back to the mountains. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun tonight, but make no mistake about it, Belfry, you will see them in their side in the state tournament later on for sure. They're, this is successful. Cuts up the middle. Sorry, Foster, and he's got his first down. So good, good off tackle, off center counter play. Uh, running back makes about eight yards on the play. Looks like it's first and ten. Belfry at the 45-yard line. Very successful program. Well coached. Very well disciplined. Their tradition speaks for itself. So Belfry's they're they're not going to be hurting. But just says a lot for for PC tonight. Yes, it does. You know, Belfry fans. I don't feel sorry for them. I mean, the, as many state championships as they have won. They have basked in the glory over the years, and what a what a program! What a program! Belfry, kudos to you. Thank you for coming over and playing us. What a program! First and ten, hand up offside. Looks like straight up the middle and tackled by three or four different players. Looks like number forty-three is one of the first ones in there. Drew and Abnett, among others. Looks like a gain of possibly one, and we have second and nine. Three fifty on the clock, and it's still running. You could just see it on the sideline on PC side. They, they, they really, it all, it all came together tonight. I mean, really, on both sides of the ball, coaching staffs living this one up, and and they should. I think 32 Tyler Robbins was also in on that last tackle. So multiple players. Belfry's got the ball. 
Second and nine, play clock has first and 10. Second and nine, right up the middle, number 30. No surprise that they're running it. Good hard run by Chris Phillips. And yes, we do have another penalty flag. So that was a run of about eight. So that was second and one. Let's see what the call is. And looks like their personal foul, face mask, you called it. Is that a 15 yarder? And it looks like, yes, they are bringing it all the way down to the 32 of Pulaski. So big penalty, 15 yard free play. But you know what? You can't get mad at that. 245 left on the play, and I'm sure we'd love to hold them to 13 points, but you know, 19 or 20 is not going to hurt either. If I know Coach Hines, though, when he goes back and watches the film, he is, it's going to drive him bonkers, though. I mean, that's just that, but that, that, that's just the, the type of perfectionist he is. Looks like a fake run. Number 11 keeps it, runs it to the left. And Caden Woolham gets hit by number 45. Big tackle. Looks like that is Braden Milburn. Good tackle, Braden Milburn, in the open field. And looks like now we have a second and eight. 210 on the clock. 210 score 55 to 13. And no fans, you are not mishearing that. PC 55, Belfry 13. Absolutely. No fantasy football here. This is reality, folks. Pulaski County Field here tonight. Putting it all together. And I got to go back to earlier tonight, the, the teacher tailgate. We had Corey Dixon, my man, in the ag shop, br coming in with a Blackstone grill. And, Mr. Murray, that food was really good. <laughs> I could go for another round of that. Hats off to the chefs. So they did a marvelous job. Who was our cooks tonight? Yeah, our cooks was uh, Dale Dotson, Andy McGargle, I, myself, I threw down on some okay. cheeseburgers and, and some hot dogs. And we even had some veggie dogs because, you know, we're courteous to everyone that comes out to eat. Very good sh turnout from Pulaski County faculty. So you're going to tell me my burger shared a place with a veggie burger on that grill. Absolutely it did. I, I saw it with my own eyes. And then the myth, the man, the legend, Robert Bullock shows up. With was his lemonade <laughs> not amazing? Listen, I've heard about this lemonade and I thought, come on, no way. Listen, I tried it on the way up to the booth tonight, and I, I've got to say, that lemonade was the best I've ever had. I don't know what that man does. He needs to market it, and he needs the Booster Club to sell that at these hot ball games. He most certainly does. He makes a fortune off selling it and at shows and things, and, and rightfully so. That lemonade, dare I say, rivals Chick-fil-A's, and uh, that hurts my soul to say it, but you know what? Robert Bullock's Lemonade. It's going down as uh, my all-time favorite. You know, to give him a shout-out, too, he's got some awesome devil dogs. He's got some uh, good deep-fried Oreos. So if you go out to a – and, you know, we're not talking about the game now because it's 55 to 13. But if you go out to any of these food fairs, you look for the orange trailer. Now, he's not a Tennessee fan, but he knows by marketing, <laughs> orange gets your attention. So he'll tell you there's no other orange trailer. So I've talked to the man. You talk about an entrepreneur. That man is an entrepreneur. Shout out to Mr. Mackinich. We threw down 60 burgers and 45 hot dogs, and nothing is to show for it, as well as everyone that brought uh, food out to our events, socially distanced, spaced out. Uh, some of us wearing masks, so uh -oh, all was safe. on the backfield. Number 30 has to drop back, so I'd interrupt him. Tackle on the back, 45 almost gets him. And 41 tackles him from behind, so it looks like J Jackson McCollum. Is that little Anthony? Anthony McCollum, little I believe Christine? so. Yes, absolutely all it right, is. Ah, Jackson, man. I remember seeing you getting off the bus, and you weren't no bigger than, than a, I don't know, a French fry, man, let's, and you are going right up. Let's call him the PC football jailer because he's just putting people in the big house right there. Oh, I like it, baby. I like it, the jailer. So, looks like we've got 12 seconds. Clock's running. No more plays are going to run. The play clock's off. Eight, seven, six, five. Clock is running out. And two, one. Ball game. Your final score, 55 to 13. A few last words before we go off the air here, Mr. Forster, on our first broadcast ever on MSN Network. Give yeah. us some thoughts. Yeah, for the first, it started out. Really, really trying. I mean, it didn't look like it was going to happen. All uh, of the cards that was showing was, look, you know what? Sometimes you win some, you lose some. We're just going to call it up. But you know what? Not with the staff that was up here with Mr. Murray and his students. They said, you know what? No way. We're not taking no uh, for an answer. 
and made it happen to where we could give you the most ridiculous manner of Pulaski County football brought to you in this stage. So it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun, and uh, I hope to do it again. You know what? I've got to go back and contradict you from earlier. You said Mr. Mackinich bought us all that food, and there's nothing to show for it. Well, my full belly says there's something to show from it, brother. So I'm full. Thank you, Mr. Mackinich, for the burgers. Uh, what a cookout. Hey, faculty, if you didn't come to this tailgate tonight and you didn't come to this game, you missed out. You need to come to the Corbin game. So our next home game is three weeks from tonight against Corbin. We're going to come back better, bigger, stronger, faster, and uh, be ready for MSN Network. We're coming in a household near you. If we can make it to Anchorage, Alaska, think about the possibilities brother i know but listen it, it's like the the big blue nation if we can uh, uh reach all parts of the world why not and that's the beauty of this uh really mr murray in these final thoughts uh really it's kind of a little surreal uh, we're just goofing off and having a good time and enjoying the things that we enjoy regardless if we're on youtube airwaves but this is pretty awesome i mean it, you talk about creativity at its finest you get together with an idea and then you guys come together and you make that idea a reality and make it happen. So thank you all. It's a lot of fun. Well, you know, talking about that real quick before we go off the air, this is Coach Miller's idea. He's always thought of MSN as his baby. Mr. Braun helped make it happen. Dave Pierce and Rodney McInish. A lot of people made this possible, so we got to thank all of them. But, you know, I want to reflect real quick. If I had to go back and think of your own vote, so don't use mine, if I'm going to use the offensive player of the game today, I'm giving it to Antonio Palmer. That 70-yard oh, yeah. touchdown was oh, yeah. huge, so two yes. TDs. Yes. And if I'm going defensive player of the game, I'm giving it to Aiden Wesley because he brought the wood tonight. He had a couple recoveries, and I'm thinking that, you know, with those two guys, man, our future looks so bright. Who are you going with your offensive and defensive player of the game? You know, I really like that with Antonio Palmer, and, I, you know, he, he's kind of won me over there. But I'm, I'm going to give it to uh, Polston. And Drew Polson just looked really sharp. You talk about a guy coming back after uh, defeating the odds of, of the injuries that he's had with bad luck on his side, really delivered, and his offensive line. And uh, really, the six man, you know, the coaching staff, they really got together. They came together with a good game plan, and they brought it out here to a very, very well coached Belfry team. So, uh, but I like your picks. I like, I like Antonio Palmer and Aiden Wesley. That was, uh, that, th those guys definitely brought it as well as everybody in the Maroon tonight. Well, you know, real quick, let's uh, thank Dalton Murray for coming in and doing yeah. that second quarter there. So, a good backup. And, Dalton uh, Murray. Know, gave me a little break. And, you know, last shout-out, number eight, Jackson Mobley. Man, we love you. We yes. love the Legend Series. Um, 44, Mason Helton, I'm calling you out. You're coming in sometime soon because I, I absolutely love watching you gotta play. Get Mason Helton. I've got to get Riley Hall. I've yes. got to get Jake Johnson. Yes. There's so many legends, I can't name them all, but we're going to put a hit list out there. You and I are hey, going to form a hit let's list. Make and it these happen. are the players we want to come in at halftime of these games and provide some feedback on how their years went and, and what it is to be a Maroon. Look, I'm, I'm really excited about the possibilities of all this because, uh, you know, again, if we can get together and, and make this happen on one night and, and people will continue to have us, then we the next players of the game tonight has been the audience and you guys listening. So thank you all for tuning in and subscribing. You know, if your principal says you did a great job and Sheila Elmore says you've done a great job, I think we're all out right for the next broadcast. I think we'll be invited back. I think we'll make it. All right. Uh, welcome to Maroon Sports Network where we bring you football in the most ridiculous manner.